Alrighty. I am all set up to begin. Oh, I'm, I'm not set up, hold on. I have to uh, <laughs> change my camera settings real quick. But uh, I, I have the uh, movie thing ready. Bear with me for a second here. All right, completed. There we go. Now we're gaming. Excellent. And uh, as soon as a couple people show up, I'm gonna start out by opening up this cool tin right here, featuring the CEO of water. Check it out. Got a uh, Snom, or uh, in German, Snom Nom. And all of its shiny glory down here. Look at this beaut. This is some solid quality right here. We got a huge majestic Kyogre CEO of water. Pokemon trading card game. Trade the cards, play the game, or just collect them like I do. Snom. Is there already like a scratch across this thing? Might be, whatever, it's fine. I just realized if I put it up here, it would block the webcam so you can't see me at all. I'm just gonna hold it. What's up, Scribbles? How's it going? We got a lot on, on our plates tonight. We got a lot to do. Uh, I decided to turn off layout redemptions for this stream because of all the stuff we're gonna do. What's up, Scully, Pokehunter, Zach, Trip? We're about to do this in a little bit, react to this movie. Well, not really react, give director's commentary. Manny, thank you for the prime. I appreciate that, dude. Ready for the behind the scenes Kino? Oh yeah, it's gonna be a good time. We're gonna get into that in a few minutes, uh, but first, we're gonna have a little bit of a pre-show here. I got this Shining Fates tin at Target today and it features uh, the CEO of water here, Kyogre. And uh, let me zoom in on it a little bit. And the highest quality I can get, we have Snom. Check him out, it's beautiful. And yeah, disclaimer, this is not the anime movie. And Ryan the Wade, thank you so much for the 15 months. Appreciate that. That's that's a lot of months. Jeez. Okay, so let's let's open this thing up real quick. Now that everyone's here, yeah, there is a shiny snom featured on here. We have an Entei coin in here that I just dropped for a second. That's a pretty cool one. That's a reminder that I need to hunt the the roamers in Fire Red Leaf Green again soon. Um, I have a card all about Kyogre. Doesn't say anything about it being the CEO of water, but uh, I've seen, I think that should just be like uh, assumed here. Cosmic Sandshrew, thank you for the prime. Oh yeah, rest assured there will be some shiny furfru in the movie. Just no guarantees that it'll be used. And what's up, SHZ? And here's like the art of the tin, but on a card for some reason. And by the way, so... Uh, yeah, maybe you should get some popcorn, because I'm about to be uh, strapped in for an hour, 38 minutes and 54 seconds once I'm done doing this, and then doing some shiny hunting alongside it. So get ready. You're in for a long movie. All right, check it out. We got the Shining Fates here. We got Dragapult, and we have uh, Toxtricity. See what we got. Okay, how about this? If I pull a shiny in one of these packs, I have to hunt it in Pokemon Sword or Shield. Let's do that. It's not gonna happen tonight. It, it might be more of an IOU, distant future kind of thing, but yeah. Here's the first code card. Here's uh, the secret message. Yours, 9X, YX, it has XY in the middle. This this has like a special, this is a specially made code card specifically for this movie showing tonight. That's really special. All right, so the card trick is four from the back. Let's go through these cards. Lightning, we got a cram, we got a rusted sword, Jim Trainer, James Trainer, uh, Choodle, Nicket, Grookey, Yanma, Morpeko, Reverse Rotom, so that is a shiny I don't have to hunt, and a Delmize VMAX. Really cool to get the anchor. I forget Delmize is like, you know, in this set. That is a solid first pull. 
Oh yeah, I, I know a lot of y'all actually watched the Pokemon like X movie yesterday, so y'all are about to watch it again. <laughs> and the original is back too. So just before I started the stream, Cosmic Sandshrew commented on the original saying, wait, it's back. And I checked and they undid the Earthbound copyright restriction on the original now. So now there are just two versions of the movie on my channel. I didn't have to like re-upload it at all at the end of the day. But I'm still kind of glad that I did get it out in a little bit better quality. Here's the second code card for y'all. All right. Let's see if a shiny's on the way. And Kieran Travis, thank you for the sub. I appreciate that. I don't know why the emote... Oh, wait. It's the special one that's not playing for some reason. All righty. Fist Energy. Thwacky. Tropius. Shout out to the Tropius I got from the Great Marsh. That Rotom. Grookey. Let's see if there's a shiny I have to hunt in this pack. I think by... By getting that Delmize last pack, though, there probably won't be. There will be a Kyogre Amazing Rare, though, and a Volcanian Regular Rare. This doesn't count as a Shiny, but this is pretty cool. I'm sad that they're already done with Amazing Rares. I thought it was a really cool rarity for them to do. I think this is my second or third Kyogre Amazing Rare from this set now, but I'm always welcome to these. They look so cool. It's so neat. Like, the, the way that it, like, splashes up here. Let me try and get a good little detail zoom here. The way that it looks like, it was just like messily splattered on, but it was intentional. So rad. And Shiny Hunter Zack, thank you for the Prime. Appreciate that, dude. Yeah, Earthbound Music does have a lot of crazy copyright stuff uh, surrounding it. Like, uh, it, it was like so heavily sampled in the first place. Like, I'm pretty sure they used a Beatles song as a sample, which is already crazy. And Johnstone with the five gifted too. <laughs> Appreciate that, dude. I, I enjoyed your first Instagram post. It was a fantastic one. Getting to see your um, gamer palace and your cat. Can't complain. And, and this, the scam train is going, the hype train. So uh, while we're all hyped up here, let me um, get set up for the main show tonight. Let me mute this. Thanks for the sub. Yeah, and Cousin Greg with the gift sub too. Really appreciate that. Yeah, that was a good Kyogre full. So it looks like I don't have to hunt anything in Sword and Shield from that. But I did start the 8th hunt of my uh, Shield badge quest the other day. So, uh, yeah, that'll be a thing. And I'm not sure, uh, Kieran Travis, if uh, the emote prefix Absol is taken. I'll have to check that out soon. That would be, be neat if it's not. Just to make everything neatly Absol. Like, I bet if I pulled enough strings, I could even, like, make my Twitch username Absol if I really wanted to. But, um, Absol-tastic's been, like, the name that I came up with for myself on the internet since, like, 2006, so I don't think that's changing anytime soon. Hey, what up, Crow? How's it going? Uh, is this gonna be posted on YouTube? I'm not sure. And, and Ramsor, I haven't tried putting my hair in a ponytail yet. For one reason, I don't have anything to tie my hair back with. I have, like, rubber bands, but th that doesn't work out too well. And I, every time I go to the store, I forget to look for that. And I don't even know where I can look for that. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I could change that now for sure, too. I'll, I'll check it out later for sure. Maybe after stream, do some after stream username pondering. But uh, in three minutes, I'm going to get into the actual movie here. Let's do our first encounters of the night. That reminds me, I actually do need to set up White Flute on all these games. I have uh, three emeralds going with battle animations and two rubies here. And uh, the reason why I have battle animations on, it's not optimal for shiny hunting, but I just think it would be cool to get a shiny with the battle anim animations on in Emerald, so I just have them on. I think it looks neat. And I could just run back and forth, or I could just do bunny hops like this. This is what we're encountering for, Soul Rock, and hopefully not another Golbat. I, I hope it's not another Golbat. <laughs> I've gotten three Golbats so far on this hunt and one Bagon. I'm always welcome to, to like another Bagon, but I would definitely prefer uh, Golbat. I mean Solrock, not, not Golbat. <laughs> Anything but Golbat. So let's see. Let me get all my SPs adjusted here. I'm going to turn on the comfy movie lighting by turning off my main overhead light. Then we're going to get into some of the movie. Yeah, battle animations are really cool. Like, in some games, like if I'm hunting the Safari Zone and Heart Gold Soul Silver, I keep them off just because it's more effective to get those numbers of encounters in. But uh, if we're talking like Emerald or something, and I'm doing a hunt like this, 
I just want to leave him on to see if I can get something cool. And thank you, Ramsor. I love this setup. Do I have a Dampmon? No need, June. Uh, the uh, Soul Rock here don't know self destruct or explosion. They're not at the level to do that. So there's there's no need to have any sort of like damp or anything. There's barely any prep for this area at all, honestly. You just kind of go in and uh, game. This encounter's taking a while. Oh my gosh, am I using a repel or something? I'm, yeah, I don't have an illuminator at the front of my party, but still. What if you teach them explosion? Then, then we have a problem, Devin. That was the longest encounter. You just watched the Donkey Kong speedrun? <laughs> oh, that that's a throwback. Back whenever I did some Donkey Kong stuff. How many shinies do I think I've gotten in my life? Uh, like, if you count, like, all my full odds and non-full odds, I'd say a few hundred. Even just full odds, I've gotten a couple hundred now. But I don't have an honest exact count off the top of my head. I caught, like, over a hundred something shinies just for the shiny gauntlet alone back in the day. But, uh, I guess without further ado, it's about time to start the movie. So here is the director's commentary of Absol Plays Pokemon X, a movie from 2013. Um, I'm going to go ahead and say right off the bat that this, this movie was an interesting story. I uploaded it just nine days after X and Y came out. So I'd like really played through the game as fast as I could while filming this and then put out the movie as fast as I could too. I noticed when I went through the project files the other day that it was actually kind of a rust job. I forgot about how quickly I, I put this thing together. And, uh, of course, it's a 2013 video for me, so don't expect the highest production quality or anything. In fact, I'll have all sorts of fun things to talk about along the way with it. So without further ado, let's get into things. Where I believe we start with the French National Anthem and me taking cool videos of myself by the lake in my old neighborhood. Hello. My name is oh, I just realized the counter's not going up. Also go by Absol on the internet. Since 2010, with Heart Gold and Soul Silver, I've been making Pokemon videos. My main goal has been always to catch them all. Not really my main goal anymore. <laughs> I want to try something different. In addition to catching them all, I want to just make a movie of me playing through the game. I haven't done a catch them all in it's forever. Not a traditional let's play by any means. And in fact, I probably won't include a lot of... This was back when Let's Plays were like the main kind of video game content on YouTube. I've done this before. Might want to turn it up a bit? Okay. There will be no challenge involved in this. Just a regular run through. So, let's go get X and Y and get this started. Can y'all hear it now alright? Let's see if I can turn it up even more if possible. Last night, I dreamed of Pokemon battles in 3D. This morning, that dream becomes a reality. I'm leaving for GameStop now because they're opening an hour early for the release of X and Y. Let's go get them. Let's go get them. I filmed this tower right here because I thought it like almost looked Eiffel Tower-like for France. Currently waiting it out at GameStop. And Cole has now arrived, adorned in Pokeball shirt. Typically you have 20 saved up. You got 10 the barriers have risen. And then go into your now these barriers are rising, and these last barriers are going to GameStop for like a, a um, as these barriers rise, a release is like magical. I was kind of bummed that we didn't have a midnight release though. That's beautiful. These are just random people we met in the store. I do not know who these people are to this day. I forgot about them. I have no idea who any of these people here are. <laughs> And Patty, thank you for the year. Appreciate that. Thanks for the sub. Let's open up the games yeah. and start playing. Okay, so fun story version. behind uh, this you. little sign right here. Let me go back a second here. If you noticed, I did an X and Y with my hands there. Hold on. Got to make sure that y'all recognize that I did the X and Y. Oh, that went back too far. I'm not going to try and skip back too far now. I'm probably gonna be hunt, shiny hunting super inefficiently tonight while doing this. There, there's the X, and there's a little bit of a Y. It's close enough to a Y. Let's open up the games. Okay, and start so that playing. sign right there that says "Thank you" in a bunch of languages. I, I like tweeted a picture of my games with that sign with "Thank you" written on it to Junichi, to Junichi Masuda, just hoping he would like my tweet. That was the sole purpose of me making that sign back in the day because that was like back when he first started to like people's tweets and stuff and i just thought it was insane back in the day that one of the people who made pokemon was like you know on the internet and was indeed an actual person so uh 
that that was the clout sign right there and nothing happened i don't even think anyone liked that tweet i'm gonna start with x version. And 25 apples thank you and for the uh, continuing the gift sub appreciate that semblance of a walkthrough will be I always love just filming the plastic wrap come off. It's so crunchy. I can just Beautiful. smell the inside of that case right now. Like, I don't know if y'all know, but like new 3DS Pokemon cases, X. when they first open up for the first time, now, they, they have a distinct have smell to it. 3DS here. And in that 3DS right now is Black 2. However, Good old Black 2. Let's oh, put in X during this part, by the way, in the living room, you can hear um, my dog. Like she she used she was like getting pretty old at this point and she used to just like scratch up against the couch because she was like really itchy all the time and she just always be making these loud whimpering noises and for like the next two or three minutes of the video you just occasionally hear these sounds in the background and only just recently within like the past two like uh, years people started commenting asking like very concerned what is that sound that I'm hearing at this point. Because it sounds like, it does actually sound pretty concerning. I went back and listened. I was like, wow, what is that? And then I remembered that it was the dog. Let's do this. <laughs> yeah, it's not a walkthrough in any way, shape, or form. They're the dog no noises. First time we had a language selector in a Pokemon game. This was the first ever worldwide release of a Pokemon game, which was crazy. Things used to be so different with people like importing from Europe and stuff. Alright, the game got really loud there. I had like no no sense of volume adjustment back in the day. I just threw stuff on the timeline in Sony Vegas and called it a day. You got your popcorn, let's go Port Raptor. I think I did just film like the entire intro of the game, but hey, that's part of the experience. I, I definitely got it. I I enjoy including like all of this footage because like I know of a couple people who don't like really play Pokemon stuff much anymore, but they like to watch the movies to like get like the feel of what the games are like. So I uh, include everything like I did here most of the time when I make these. Yeah, Xerneas is so cool. I'm Team Xerneas over Eveltal any day now, like every day any day now. That doesn't even make sense. First time we had like skin tone choices and stuff too. Matt Absol. That was the first time I ever got to use that name because like uh, they added the 12 character limit to Pokemon games and stuff. Instead of the trainer's name only being like five or six characters long, maybe seven characters was like the old one. You watched the re-upload last night. So you're, you're watching it again now, Rat Smacker. Eveltal's Cry is pretty cool. It is the Bacon Bird when it's shiny, but Xerneas is just so much cooler. It was the new type. It was fairy type. How can you compete with that? I haven't even. I like the abrupt cut yet, there. I'm already absolutely amazed. Dude, I just These played through the intro at this point. <laughs> are like beyond anything we've seen before in a Pokemon portable game. And I'm really just impressed so far. And I'm just hoping that it lives up to my expectations. And so far it has gone beyond that. Now let's get our starter Pokemon. I love how I like played through like the first five minutes of the game and felt compelled to like walk away from the game for a minute and just be like, this is so cool, guys. Even though I just went through like the naming screen and stuff. It, it was that cool, though. It was, like, the first main series, like, 3D game. It was nuts. How come it got re-uploaded? Because I used Earthbound music in the original, and it was blocked to 95% of the world for, like, a week. And um, now it's back up. So there's no point to the re-upload anymore. But uh, it's it's there. And I'm going to keep it there. It's in 1080p now, though. All right. So I've always wanted I'm just easily impressed. From that's the, the moral of the story. So that's who I'm choosing. Good old Chespin. At this point, I didn't really know about um, Chestnut. Like, even though there were leaks everywhere, I avoided most of the leaks. So I didn't know what Chestnut looked like. I feel like my decision would have been different if I knew what Chestnut looked like in the end. And I named it Chester, which is just the name that came to mind for me, but apparently that's also the name of the one you get, like, from Shauna at the end of the game. 
if you get the gift chest not from her. So that was a crazy coincidence. Now I get Pokédex. Right now I'm taking advantage Dude, of the super training. EV training. And I'm boosting my attack EVs. I went crazy with the super training in this playthrough. This super training is actually pretty great. It's a really fun mini game and doesn't take too long. And I actually really enjoy it. I do this enjoy some super training, to be honest. It's fun. You can easily make your in game team viable. As far as I'm aware, I'm not Shauna. Unlike the other games where you'd have to like delete all the other EVs you got from all the wild Pokemon and everything. This was such a huge step up, honestly, though. Like, even though, like, horde battling became the better way to EV train, which made super training obsolete. All, of, all the training bags you get. Um. Mission. Super training was a cool idea. Being able to make your in-game team viable. That's something that they've been pushing more and more towards, especially with Sword and Shield now, with, like, the nature mints and stuff. Hyper training and whatnot. It's good. Being able to make the Pokemon that you actually care about be the ones that, like, can go on to do competitive stuff if they happen to be a good Pokemon in the meta. The balloons were really cool too. I feel like I learned about a couple Pokemon for the first time through seeing the balloons. Yeah, hordes were really cool to have around. I think this is my first capture right here. My first team member. And Gucci Box, thank you for the sub. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Just pause for a second. Thanks so much. Really appreciate that. That's pretty Gucci of you. My team was pretty weird by the end of this, too. Especially because it doesn't have shiny Furfru on it, but we'll get there eventually. Wow, this Pokédex entry thing looks so cool. In retrospect, that Pokédex doesn't really look that cool. <laughs> it's kind of weird looking, the Pokédex entry. I love how Pikachu has its actual voice in this game now. First time they had Pikachu have its voice. A lot of people just kind of like accept that as a fact these days and didn't realize that it had a cry in the past, like a bunch of super, super zoomers. What is you doing? Right now I'm watching my old X movie, giving commentary on it, and hunting Solrock on five Game Boy Advances. Oh, just a normal night. Catching Fletchling. Yeah, Pikachu did get that special treatment. Now it is. I thought it was like a step towards everyone getting like their Still own voices, Saturday. but it looks like it's just Eevee, Pikachu, hours. and Gigantamax Meowth at this point. Two hours and ten minutes. I'm really enjoying it. Yep. This is what my life has come to for now. All right, Chester. Now. I like how I said this is what my train. life has come to for now, right there, as if like my entire life wasn't already just me playing Pokemon all the time. Before the first gym, so I'm kind of ridiculous. Now, I'm gonna move on in the story a little bit more. Actually, on second thought, I'm doing what I always do. So I'm this song right walk. here, when I went for my walk, is the Earthbound music that got this video copyright like taken down in the first place. And uh, what I did was I took the MIDI of the Earthbound music and I put the Gen 3 trumpets over every single instrument. So now you get to hear the Hoenn trumpet version of the song softly in the background here while I go for this walk. And on this walk, my goal will be to evolve my Scatterbug fully and possibly evolve Chespin. Just get some level grinding in, maybe catch some Pokemon that I Sounds missed good, in Ramsor. the previous routes. I want to be kind of thorough. And then after that, I'll go after the first gym. Let's go. Just a good old walk right here.
cannot see the screen at all. Such a bummer that like the only game system that looks good. Tree Pokemon that was shown in the Jap. Oh look, there's there's Trevenant. I didn't even know its name at the time. I just knew it was shown in a Japanese trailer, and I thought it looked just like Trevenant right here. Japanese trailers had no clue. But yeah, it's a shame that the only like Nintendo portable that looks good outside is like the OG GBA, without like um you know the one without a backlight or anything, because all the other ones are just like totally impossible to see outside. It's it's rough. We're 15 minutes in. No, we're, we're 10 minutes eyes. in right now. Maybe it's an evolution. Appreciate that, Leafeon. Congrats on the uh, uh, Mr. Mime. Rapidash. Look at that. Really cool. Still attempting to level up Scatterbug. And that flameless Rapidash, Pokemon blogger, you know, Zelgarath, the guy who, like, uh, inspired me to make videos in the first place, pointed out that that was prophet prophetic. Now that we have Galarian uh, Rapidash. But yeah, Cosmic Sandshrew, the point you were saying right there. You love when there's a shot of me walking away because you know right after it cuts to me having to walk back and grab the camera. That is actually so true. Every single walk I've ever gone for for a video, there's really just like the footage is twice as long as what you see. Because every time I have to walk back and go pick up the camera, maybe I should just post some of that footage someday. Just the, the, the walk yeah, of shame back to the right camera to pick it up. Let's see if I can get it up to the next evolutionary form before I get home. <sighs> the best lake. Just one of the best spots to just It is a pretty cool spot right there. Chill out and stuff. I kind of took it for places. granted until I moved so and then like really I go back and I'm like, wow, this is a cool spot every time it I walk down really there. drastically different from the other generations, but I like all the changes. And I think I'll always like the changes because honestly... I'm one of those people that's always going to be a fan, no matter what, really. I haven't even hit True. the first gym yet, but I've really enjoyed all the extra features. And the fact that I haven't hit the first gym yet just shows how much there is to do in this game. I'm definitely going to look into shiny hunting, because apparently a lot of people have X and Y were so really, far. really, like, heavy on the first part of the game, different. for sure, though. If it is, like, shiny hunting may become a lot easier, but that gives me more opportunities to catch more shiny Pokemon. Maybe catch all the shiny Pokemon, like the shiner. I'm not going to get a shiny Dex. I thought I would whenever I did that right there, but I'm not going to get a shiny Dex. But yeah, X and Y, like the beginning of the game, there's so much to it. Like, there is so much game for the first two gyms, then it kind of gets smushed together eventually. My mouth and the rest of my head have different skin tones from the sun. Yeah, that's true. My, I, my face gets red really, really easily. There might be a Milotic in that water. I don't know. Did I know the odds were halved at this point? I suspected it. I wasn't really even like following the shiny hunting community too much at this time, but I saw so many people popping off with shinies at this point and people observing really fast hunts that I was like, huh, I, I wonder what the odds are now. Cause I keep in mind with X and Y until the end of October, 2013, like maybe Halloween, we had zero data mining on this game. This was like the most in the dark we ever were on a Pokemon game when it first released. And, um, yeah, it, it was crazy. Like, people were just making their own discoveries as we went and stuff. I was constantly, like, checking Twitter to see what was going on. Like, I think I talk about this later in the movie, but I, I was thinking about shiny hunting Xerneas. And I actually did a little bit of research into seeing if anyone had found one yet. And no one had, so I was like, you know what, it's probably shiny locked. And I'm glad that I assumed that. Yeah, I'm going to probably do some ingredient raids later, Retro. Maybe later this weekend. Shiny yeah, 2013. Right Can't believe it was eight years ago now. My 3DS battery just died. But luckily I saved right before it, so I only lost like 20 experience points. So it's not much of a loss at all. Just gotta walk the rest of the way home. What even There's is the no point? to occupy me. First world problems. Fun fact, no point to I walk in if your DS is dead. Pokewalker battery. But I've had this Articuno in there for like a week because I just haven't touched hard gold. Good old Pokey Walker. It has like 9,790 extra watts. Pretty cool. So that OG Pokey Walker thing is pretty interesting. That Pokey Walker right there, whenever I finally finished the Pokey Walker gauntlet, which has been on hold since 2019, that Pokey Walker was lost at my university on campus for years. And in 2019, this is the craziest thing. 
Someone reached out to me because they believed that they had found my Pokewalker and traced it back to me. And they were right. So that that's going in the video, that whole story. That's one of the craziest things that's ever happened to me. But uh, yeah, the Pokewalker that I used for the first part of the Pokewalker Gauntlet, which still hasn't been finished yet, was the replacement one I got. And I'm going to finish it out now with the original. It's insane. But yeah, speaking of DS, 3DS is dying. At this point, I didn't even realize how, how fast it died after it started doing the red flashes of death. Those things, like, the battery dies so fast once it starts flashing. But anyway. It's a TM on the ground. The TM we found. Too. Perhaps maybe Mew can learn this. I don't know what I did with that so CD. Adapters just let you keep I don't even think I actually kept to. it. I think I just kept it on the ground there. And as far as that goes with X and Y, that's probably going to be the case with me. Just gonna never stop playing. You're probably right, the flashing probably did Let's kill the battery it. more. Let's do this. Oh, you're about to see the famed Surskit. Everyone type ah whenever you see the Surskit. I really found that in the road. Hard truck. I, I, I wouldn't just place a CD in the middle of the road and say that I found it just for a video. I did actually find that CD in the road in my neighborhood for some reason that day. There it is. Ah. I really like how it actually takes on the environment of the gym. Like, it's almost exactly like the gym. But I forgot to turn battle scene back on. But you can still see what's happening, obviously. Spupa's a warrior. Actually, never mind, it's not. <laughs> I didn't expect my Spupa to last too long. I do find a lot of crazy things in the road, that's true. Um, hold on, let me plug my Instagram real quick. Not my main Instagram, but my second Instagram. Let me pause re right here. Speaking of things found in the road... It's loading. Bike ride finds. This is my second Instagram. And I find crazy stuff in the road while I'm just biking. I found like a, a bumper. I found a, a couch. Found some, another CD. These are bullets, I think. That's kind of crazy. Uh, big Batman balloon. If you want to see my bike ride finds, check out bike ride finds. Anyway, back to the movie. First gym battle. I didn't do any sort of speed up or anything here. By the way, um, team just keep like no the you know final. the gym leader music for the first time, first time hearing it at this point. I'm gonna just keep changing. And here's Vivian, Vivid Papillon or Vivid Butterfly, the final form of Spupa. This one's at level 12, meaning out here breaking down name etymology, involved. saying Vivid Papillon. I was so on top of things. Typical gym leader, uh, under level Pokemon. We'll see about that. But Pikachu seems to be doing a pretty good job here. I forgot I had this Pikachu on my team. It definitely didn't stay on for very long. Rollout really helps with this gym. There we go. And as a last resort, I had Fletchling, but... It's only level 5 right now. There goes Chester. I mean, Chester leveled up. There goes Chester. A lot. Really cool. And that's Viola. You can kind of hear the TV show I was like watching in the background during this every now and then. I just did not care. I just hit the record button without making any adjustments to anything around yeah, that's me. That's really cool. I think so, Leafeon. I think... Vivian's been absent in like the 8th gen so far because they haven't figured out how to implement it since the Switch doesn't have the same sort of location settings as the 3DS. Doesn't have the same kind of world map or anything. Doesn't really have the specifics of states and stuff anymore. So um, it's been a little bit up in the air. I'm, I'm not surprised that they haven't implemented right. it in much. They did bring it back in New Snap though. There. They had all the patterns. Uh, let's move on in our journey. Really went glad I went for that walk earlier rather than later, because I was going to save it for the second gym. 
now look what it's like outside. I forgot it rained that day. It just keeps raining. Perhaps it's a Drizzle Politoed Kyogre. Or maybe another Pokemon has Drizzle. I don't know. I just gotta keep going to find out. I really had to add in that early help for evolving Sligoo thing. This is actually pretty clear. Vivian. The modern pattern. That's the one that took the longest also, for people to find and snap. I recently got the experience share. And it's really great in this game because it's just like the experience all from red and blue. As in every Pokemon gets all the experience after the battle. Not all of it, but a good deal of it. It's well worth it, especially for catching up the rest of my team. I think they actually do gain the full amount of experience really when you like use it. At least in, the, in like Sun and Moon, I'm pretty sure they do. I, I just learned that not too long ago. Level 100. Yo, thank you for the sub, Shure 50. Appreciate that. Eight months. Subscriber. Thanks for the sub. Do I have a starter in mind yeah. for Brilliant Diamond, Shining Pearl? I don't. I kind of want to hunt one. But uh, I'm not sure which one I'm going to pick yet. I've been on the fence about maybe even trying to do like a nostalgia quest is what people call it. Where I go back and I shiny hunt my original team from my first playthrough. In which case I'd start with Chimchar and then I'd get like a shiny Rose Raid. Um... Chadot, Hippowdon, Floatzel, and one other. Luxray. That would be my original team. That, that would be a fun thing to do. But I'm not sure if I'm going to do that yet for my first playthrough of it. I, I might just do, like, you know, a standard movie playthrough. Like this thing right here. Instead of, like, doing all the shiny hunting. Could be something I do again later in the future. But for the first playthrough, I'm still up in the air on what I'm going to do. Routes actually have names. And I think all the names are actually based on French words and phrases, but I haven't been to enough to see the actual trend yet. This is also happening before the second gym. And now, I have a Quilladin. Hold on. I have to break the immersion for a second. My camera is out of space. Oh no. So I'm gonna delete this real quick. There's the lake back at home. Cool. Yeah, and there's good old Quilladin right there. <laughs> Notice how I have barely any words to say awesome. about it. I said awesome. <laughs> I definitely didn't think it was awesome. My first Pokemon from Fire Red, Charmander. That wasn't my first Pokemon ever, but my first Kanto starter. Dark Marine! Thank you for the Prime! Also Charmander. Thanks for the sub. Yeah. I'm gonna send Flood by Bay to PC Box. Alright, we got Charmander now. Cool. That was the name of my first Charmander in Fire Red. That's what I named my first Charmander. <laughs> or I, I could just say it in the movie too. Even though I re-edited this the other day, I haven't watched this in a long time, so I got a lot to say that I'm probably gonna repeat. Oh, that one looks cool. Maybe crow. If this one turns out to be pretty fun to do, I might do it with the other movies. This is my first time trying something like this. So I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm just speaking words. Motto of my life. Still is. I still wear shorts every day, by the way. Something that I don't think I mentioned here is that I did a hundred soft resets for the Snorlax, trying to get it shiny. And I'm glad that I just gave up on doing that and didn't do it, because it turns out that it's shiny locked. So I'm I'm very, very grateful that I didn't keep going with that. Anyway. I'm a Cinderace fan still. Good old pokey flute.
Pokemon, indeed. Right. We got Snorlax. What's up, Mark Dash? Still Snorlax, which is pretty great, especially before the second gym. Yeah, the shiny lock Snorlax. Stop, by the way. Such a weird shiny lock, by the way. Why did they do that? So, yeah. Second gym time. I have found my favorite Pokemon. I was so hyped to see this thing Therefore, so early in the it. game. Crazy that they just threw Absol early in the game like this. It wasn't even that rare on the route, too. Still took me like six phases to hunt it shiny though. Eventually. I can't Absol's available. This is phase five. Second gym. Literally what this I just is said. Great. <laughs> It'll be a good member of my permanent team from the beginning. Sweet. All right, so it's midnight now. So it's the ending of day one, and I haven't even gotten the second gym badge yet, but within good reason. I did a lot of level grinding, and I fully super trained Absol, too. And I did all the secret super training missions, which are really cool as well. I may do some more of those later. But I got a lot done today. Definitely playing some more tomorrow, because I only stopped because my 3DS battery died again, and I'm getting really tired. So I'll see you tomorrow. Day 2 of X and Y. And I just realized that filming the American flag is no longer relevant because Kalos is France, not U America, like Unova was. I'm pretty sure in a lot of my old, like, gotta catch them all videos for Unova, whenever I was, like, trying to figure out what to use for real life footage, I'd just resort to filming just the random flags that I saw because, you know, Unova was based off the United States. So I was like, Pokemon is real by, like, f filming the flag or whatever. Bike shop in Silage City, or however you pronounce it. Oh, I love that um, emo emoticon Luna Vulpix, the Solrock, ASCII art, whatever you call that. Alright, yellow or green? I'm gonna go with green. No, yellow. Yellow, definitely. <laughs> I changed my mind so fast on right, that. Now we have the bike. An important key item. Why were those the colors that they gave you for that? So so arbitrary. Really Yellow and green. New register interface. It's really handy. There's a trail. Wait, is it because X and Y are red and blue? Because because X and Y's colors are blue for X, red for Y, yellow and green for the bikes. No, I'm I'm just making this up. Couldn't find the gym in that city. This place is really cool. There literally like was a gym in that city place. though. <laughs> With the whopping 12 hours into the game, we're at our final. We're finally at the second gym, about to face the leader, and this is my current team. And as I, and I reiterate, this team will probably change again, but I'm really enjoying this so far. There are lots of great Pokemon that can be found early in the game, like my favorite Pokemon, Absol, which is almost never found this early. Yeah, I did put in 12 hours before the second gym. But that's also because I was doing so much of the, um, what's it, what's it called? The, uh, super training. I fully super trained, like, almost all my Pokemon on my team to have, like, max EVs before, um, going into this. Some Pokemon Conquest music here. Rock-type battle. It's got a good soundtrack, that game. Yeah, the, the Conquest Flute is really good. Jirachi send out animation in Emerald takes forever. What's up, Teaver Blom? Yeah, I'm doing director's commentary of the Pokemon X movie tonight, so it's an interesting night to catch me streaming for the first time. That is the one that did end up taking the longest to find in Snap. The modern pattern Vivion. It was missing in action for weeks. 
There are some things that seem out of reach no matter how hard you try. However, it's important that you never give up, no matter the opponent or the odds. I can tell from our battle that you and your Pokemon understand that. To commemorate such an impressive show of teamwork, please accept the Cliff Badge. Cliff Bar. That whole, this whole gym really makes me want to go rock climbing. I might do that sometime. I definitely... Director's note, I have never once been rock climbing. Definitely included in this video if I do it soon. I never did. <laughs> we get rock tomb, which is kind of handy. Alright, second day, second gym. Oh, Anubis, that's so awesome. More today. I'm actually, hold on, let me actually pause this for a second. That new uh, Sinistee, or um, yeah, the new Sinistee thing that you found about the overworld spawns is so cool. I'm actually doing that as the eighth hunt for my badge quest right now, and I'll probably be streaming that sometime soon. So uh, y'all can look forward to that, but uh, your findings about Sword and Shield are really, really neat. But anyway, back to the movie. If I don't dilly-dally and try and catch everything. All right, to the third gym we go. Off to the third. This is the X and Y movie, not the anime movie. This was the first video I ever made that just kind of blew up out of nowhere. And it was only because... People were looking up Pokemon XY movie, looking for the anime movie, and this is what they found instead. Just me, like, <laughs> filming my first playthrough of the game, my first experience with it. it rock climbing would be a good way to train up for the Dallas boxing match, that's true. This encounter's taking a while on the far right game. There we go. I think now, this song's from a Kirby game. Gym leader, Karina. She's a fighting type gym leader, and she has a lot of interesting Pokemon, including me and Fu, which can surprisingly be found this early on in the game. Uh, my Vivian has a lot of attacks that are strong against fighting types right now, like Psybeam and Draining Kiss. I had no idea that fairy types were actually strong against fighting until this gym. That's kind of weird to think about. I had no idea how the fairy type worked up until this point at all. <laughs> I, I didn't understand. It's like, I was finding out it's like strengths and weaknesses as I did through the, this first playthrough. Kind of weird to go back in time and think about like fairy type coming into existence for the first time. Because it does really feel like, actually like, it's been there forever now at this point. But it was a very new concept at this point. Oh, and by the way, all the post commentary in this movie, like... Whenever I'm narrating over these, like, gym battles and stuff, I, caught, I catch a cold later in the process of, like, filming this. And I'm pretty sure I did all the narrating while still, like, really deep into that cold. So my voice will sound really, really nasally for a lot of this video. So my voice, like, already sounds different because this was eight years ago, but it sounds extra different during these gym commentaries. Seems to have a pretty good variety of Pokemon. I also caught this Mr. Rhyme in the Reflection Cave right before this gym. And I just kind of had it on my team and never deposited it, but it really came in handy in this gym because of its psychic and uh, typing. And I really like that they added fairy to Mr. Mime as well. Fun fact, there can be female Mr. Mimes because it has a different name in Japan that doesn't involve Mr. And her final Pokemon is really cool. Isn't Amucha. it Barriered or something? It's one of the new Pokemon. It's I think that's his flying. Japanese name. And it's a Luchador, Hawk, so it's pretty much a win-win-win situation. It's got really great typing and a really cool concept. Halucha is a win-win-win situation all around. Sick Pokemon. I like Pokemon. how all gym leaders still focus on the uh, new Pokemon for their final Pokemon. But anyway, that's the third gym. We beat it. Yay. What's up, Tavia? And there's Karina. Gym badge number three. This was only an hour after the second badge. Much better than the eight hours between my first and second badge. Cool stuff. The Rumble Badge, Pokemon Rumble. Yeah, I'm ready for the next Rumble weekend. We get power up. That'll be coming soon. Completely new move. I'm not sure what I would consider a lose lose Pokemon. I'd have to think about that for a little bit. I'm sure there's one out there. Commentary's gotten better over the years. So the story behind how the commentary for this worked with this was that I had like an audio recording device, just like a little brick thing. And um, this was almost everything that I did was like in one take. What I did was I sped up the battle right there, played it back in the editing software on mute, 
And I just talked into the microphone as the battle went on. It's like I'm doing this commentary right now, but that's literally what I did just over the battles during this movie. So my gym battle commentary was just very, very, like, I don't know, just... I like how they uh, gave it the psych, the fairy typing here. Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 I've definitely, like, improved on that over the years, for sure. Top of the Tower of Mastery. We're going to battle her again, actually, with Lucario. So I guess we're going to climb that tower again. I love the Tower of Mastery. There's the DNA strand on the staircase, or the ramp. Let's just keep climbing. Reminds me a whole lot of Legend of Zelda Spirit Tracks. Does anyone remember the tower in that game? You had to climb it so many times. Lucario are so short. RT, if you're taller than Lucario. I think pretty much all of us are. I don't remember its exact height, though. Yeah, that's true. Phantom Hourglass had that, too. Lucario versus Lucario. I think we did pass the part where Sabrina so was, like, simping for the male protagonist. That's just, like... I, I just didn't include that in the movie, I guess. There was so much gameplay I just didn't film... It was so tough, like, going through this. This was the first time I ever did this. This was the first time I played through a Pokemon game, like, for the very first time without knowing what was in it and recording as I went. So it was weird trying to decide when to bring out my camera and when to just kick back and play the game. It, it was really weird. Yeah, if Spirit Tracks had some great music. I'm actually a big fan of that game, despite what everyone thinks of it. <laughs> I really like when they take the gym leaders and they turn them into like all of these big characters in the story. It's Literally the only gym leader they did that for in this game. So sad. Karina is like the only gym leader who like fight outside of a gym if I remember correctly. Outside of like maybe the Battle Mason or whatever on Route 7. This There's... gave me some really false hope about what they did with the rest of the gym leaders in this game. Because I honestly forget about so many of them. Except for like maybe you know like Clement since he was in the anime. Karina. Almost everyone else, though. Being like kind of forgettable to for maybe five minutes in the game. They seem to do this a lot in black and white as well. Uh, all right. So there's the mega evolution button. I'm gonna press it for the first time. All right, and I'll use power up punch. Clement destroyed me in the Murkrow run that I was doing not too long ago, too. Oh, man. Took 30 minutes to beat him. It's so cool. It is a pretty good theme right here. I forget it exists, because it just plays for this one battle that's like an instant win. What's up, Taco Talon? Watching and uh, commentating on the Pokemon X movie... Despite re-editing it earlier this week, this is still my first time in years seeing most of this. I don't remember the structure of most of this movie. Ramos was kind of cool in the anime. He's just a chill old man who likes growing plants and has like a goat. He's, he's cool. Olympia's gym is so cool though, Don Cachino. Like, the, the space background and stuff, the puzzle of it is like almost like the distortion world in 3D. But yeah, like... You just hardly ever see those gym leaders outside of their gyms. They have cool designs and everything, but they just didn't do much with them. And that's why they're so, like, forgettable. All right. Cool. I feel like if we had more time or if we had, like, an X2, Y2, we would have seen them, like, outside of the gyms a lot more or something later on. Yeah, have a lot more story to them. The guy from the Lucario movie. Aaron. 
The Aura Guardian. This is why I love playing the game spoiler free. Because I had no idea I'd be able to keep a Lucario. It's something I would have never expected. It's a shame that that Lucario is shiny lock too. It'd be really cool if you could hunt that. Evolution. So, I guess we should rush onward towards the fourth gym now that we have a Lucario. Olympia sure would have been perfect for inverse battles. Yet, but I don't have a fighting type right now, so I might as well. Yeah, Pokemon Z, true. I was so ready for that, man. Mario Galaxy music. Still one of my so, favorite pieces of video game music in a ever. Couple hours I'm driving back to school, to college. It's only like a 30 minute drive. I still can play plenty of Pokemon there. But I'm taking a break after the third gym and after getting that Lucario. And I'm just realizing how interesting it is to make a blind run video like I am right now. In my previous movies involving Butterfree and Absol, I already knew the entire storylines of the games, so I knew which parts to film. But in X and Y, it's really just a major guessing game about what I need to film. I know I need to film the gym battle. How many times am I going to pause the movie and talk about something and then talk about it like two minutes later in the movie? I think it's going to be a lot. That's about it. So I'm probably not going to be able to show much of the main story just due to not being able to figure out the main story. Another thing I realize is how pure the game is right now. I mean, there are very, very few cheating methods on the 3DS right now. And since the game came out worldwide yesterday, it's very unlikely that the game has already been messed around with. And it's very unlikely to find cheated Pokemon. This was so true. Right now, the GTS. We were living in a utopia. Service with random people over Wi-Fi. No cheated Pokemon whatsoever. methods to get Pokemon. No transfers either, because PokéBank wasn't out till I'd December. Like to just use the Wonder Trade or something, and somehow get on Global Link, and somehow find out who traded that Pokemon to me, and find a way to thank them somehow. It's completely possible. Dude, that that is a crazy sentence right there. Considering like the the gauntlet that I'm about to post. Listen to that again. Remember the Wonder Trade Gauntlet? Listen to this. And somehow get on Global Link. Hold on. Go back five like to just Are actually very viable methods to get Pokemon. Someday, I'd like to just use the Wonder Trade or something. And somehow get on Global Link. And somehow find out who traded that Pokemon to me. And find a way to thank them somehow. It's completely possible. And like literally, I, I just got through trading with like most of y'all and Twitch chat like dozens of times where I could like thank you right there. Full circle moment right there. Really did go and fulfill that someday, even though it wasn't through the global link or whatever. It's completely possible without appearing creepy. Kind of. Sometimes, wasn't that creepy? I guess. Maybe. Anyhow, enough rambling. I'm gonna go on back inside and I'm gonna keep playing until I drive back. Ladies and gentlemen, more fan service towards Generation 1 fans. Free Lapras. Literally five minutes in the game after free Lucario. I was wondering where I would have a Surf Pokemon, and I almost taught it to a Love Disc I caught with an old rod. But now, I have a Lapras to Surf on. I almost wish I used a Love Disc instead at this point. By the way, this Lapras, I tried fun. soft resetting for it a minute ago just to see if it would change at all. It's always the same nature and characteristic. Funnily enough, though, even though that that's the case, it's not shiny locked. It could be shiny. I'm not sure if it differs between game, but mine was docile, and it likes to take... I don't know if that's actually the case or not for that, that Lapras, if it's always the same nature and characteristic, or if I just had bad luck and got the same nature and characteristic every time I reset. Because that thing can be shiny hunted. XCS does. But yeah, free Lapras. I'm not complaining. Now we can surf. Maybe someday, Mark. I haven't surfed yet in this Gotta go through really. my consoles and game collection or something. Or my shiny collection, even. Oh my even. gosh. It actually shows the Lapras. This is beyond cool. Nope. Nope. Sometimes when I was filming this, like right here, I had my 3D on, and I had no idea how, like, filming the 3DS with 3D would look. So, um, 
a lot of this movie you just see this like awful looking effect because I didn't realize how like detrimental it was for me to film with the 3D on on the 3DS. A few hundred shinies for sure. I don't know how many. I thought I was done with tentacles forever. Just nope. About to make the drive back. Actual driving footage. The mad lad took out the camera and filmed on the interstate for like 30 seconds. What a rush. Guys, I just found a shiny fur fruit as soon as I got back. It's kind of crazy. This is a really cool shiny. Too. A random shiny? And it has multiple forms. Really, really cool one. I hope he uses it on his team. I don't want to zoom in on my team. <laughs> I want to see the fur fruit again. Oh my gosh. This is so unexpected. I've heard your shinies are a little bit easier to find, but I'm still pumped. This is awesome. Just look at that thing. It's beautiful. So, to be honest, when I found this thing, I was under the impression that the shiny odds were drastically reduced. Like, I was thinking that they were somewhere around like 1 in 500 something and that I would maybe find a lot of shinies along the way on my journey. So I think another reason why I didn't end up using this thing on my team is that I thought I would find a lot of other shinies along the way. But this was literally like the one X and Y shiny that I wanted to go for first from 6th gen and I just found it randomly this day and I ended up, I ended up not using it on my team at all. It's so so nuts to go back and think about that though. That's my biggest regret about this whole playthrough. This Catching this thing and not using it. Fur fruit was really cool. I used yeah, to like Pokemon Go odds. Because <laughs> it looks really similar. But and Devin, one, which is just what did you just say? You said, remember when people thought Fur fruit was an Absol pre Evo? I just talked about how it looked similar to Absol in the movie. Crazy. It's cool. In fact, it was gonna be. By the way, the reveal of Fur fruit. Sorry to keep pausing the movie and stuff. If, if I'm pausing too much and you'd much rather me just keep the movie rolling while I commentate, let me know. Never done this before. But anyway, Furfru's reveal was interesting. It was during like a Nintendo Direct or one of the trailers of the game in which they just like messed up in editing. They uh, they left in one frame of Furfru being on screen. So uh, <laughs> people like pause the video at just the right moment and were like, wait, there's a new Pokemon in, the, in, the, in this trailer that they forgot to cut out or they didn't cut out correctly. And that was a pretty common occurrence even to this day with Nintendo stuff. Like the same thing happened with Ganondorf being in Smash for 3DS and Wii U. Someone paused at like the right moment and saw Ganondorf on screen who hadn't been revealed for the game yet. And the same thing eventually happened with uh, Sword and Shield too with QFan. When uh, Rose sends it out at the beginning of the game, there, there was a trailer that showed that, and for a brief second, you could see the outline of QFan on screen. But anyway, yeah, I can keep pausing. Okay, sounds One good. One of my first uh, targets if I decided to shiny hunt. <laughs> so awesome. It was a Photoshop uh, bull map. Training. Another scatter bug. The number one Smash League debunker. Well, that's shiny number one. Hopefully more to come. And after that exciting shiny encounter. Dude's only got three gym badges and a fully evolved starter. Crazy. Look at that thing. Just not. I haven't seen that yet either. I wonder what type it is. Spiky shield? <laughs> what is this? In addition to protecting the user from attacks, this move also damages any con attacker that makes direct contact. So it's basically like an upgraded version of Protect. I'm actually going to teach that over Bite. I've missed most of SGDQ this week. I'll have to check out some of the replays of the coolest stuff. Like Sonic Adventure 2 is something i got to check out for so it's sure. and fighting. Did not expect that. That's going to be really cool, because it's the same type thing as Barizion and Breloom. And it's a pretty good type overall, despite his many weaknesses. All right. Now Stravinsky's evolving, or Fletchinder, named, him named after the composer after of the. Uh, <laughs> I interrupted my movie self to say what I named it after, the composer of the Firebird Suite, Stravinsky. I get one of my 
favorite Gen 6 Pokemon, Talonflame. Fire and flying. What's up, Pika Lane? Really and cool. Yeet? So what am I doing? So uh, right Yeet69 or 420, which is a beautiful username. What I'm doing right now is I'm hunting Solrock and Ruby and Emerald. And I'm commentating my movie of the first time I played through Pokemon X from like 2013 right now. So I'm just uh, talking about stuff. Look, everyone. I actually did watch the Geo Guesser run. Waker. This is a really cool gym concept. All the gyms here are really nice looking, and it looks like they're trying to take full advantage. This of is in the Bacon Room. And things you couldn't do with gyms before. All right, gym leader number four. And this guy wasn't officially revealed, I believe, so he'll be a surprise. Oh, he's an old man. <laughs> and Garamos. What a great reaction. Oh, he's an old man. I never expected an old man. Over there, in the past, there have been Bryce and Blaine. An uncatchable quest would be crazy. For this gym, I was well over leveled. I don't know if I'm going to do it, though. <laughs> something that typically happens with me, no matter what game it is. Plus, I had a ton of advantages against all of his Pokemon, so it was a lot easier of a fight than it could have been. Yeah, you can see my reflection in the 3DS so a lot. Kind of keep going on trucking, attacking everything with all of the advantages that I have against his Pokemon. Kind of wish it could have lasted longer, his Pokemon could have been higher level. But that's the price of being over leveled. You don't get to experience as much of a challenge. All right. That was an easy fourth badge. What well, phase am I on? This is phase five. All the time. I found three gold bats and one bagon. First, it started like the photography puns in the first gem. Now I can finally use fly too, which will be great for going back and catching Pokemon because I've really missed quite a few, especially some of the newer ones. I was really focused on catching them all back in the day when I did this. And DJ Gangsta Gangsta, thank you for the tier one uh, gift to Prince Scott. Uh, yeah. Thank you, appreciate that. I'm gonna try and pause for a lot of sub notifications and stuff if I'm talking a lot during the movie. But man, I was so over leveled here. But my mindset playing through this is so different from what I do nowadays. Like back then, I was super focused on catching them all as my primary objective, where. I needed to catch all the Pokemon from the generation as soon as possible, but I don't really do that at all anymore. I'll, I'll someday actually go back and do another catch them all or something, but it's just not my primary objective. I kind of replace that with like getting one shiny on my team or something. But even then, you can clearly see that getting a shiny on my team was not of utmost importance because that Furfru is absent from this team right here. So crazy. Yeah, this is the progress we've made. Still not a final team though. Not quite sure what I'm gonna use in the end. It's a mystery. Five slots, no dog. Yeah, I, I seriously had an open slot that I could have put that fur through in there. So that's four badges but now, I didn't. Four to go. So is, sad. If there are eight badges, and what I replace it with, there might be more. It's pathetic. I have no idea. Yeah, you'll see eventually. Spoiler alert. It, it rhymes with sale Rome beast. I did catch them all in the Isle of Armor and Crown Thunder, that's true. Still did remain true to form there. Do I have a living dex? I sort of do. So right now my living dex is in uh, Gen 4. I have 1 through 493 in my first copy of Heart Gold, which was the first series I ever did on my channel. Then I have all of the new Unova Pokemon in my Pokemon Black, all the 6th gen Pokemon in my X, all the 7th gen Pokemon in Sun, and I haven't caught all the 8th gen Pokemon yet after all this time. So I have a living deck spread out across the generations, but I don't have a consolidated living deck anywhere right now, and I think I need to do that someday. Get all of them in Pokemon Home so I can get that special Magearna or whatever. Future video series for sure. Now or we're going up even. against the last gym leader that I actually knew about whenever I started playing the game. 
last gym leader actually revealed. Uh, Clement. He's an electric type, and his gym, the background faintly reminds me of a fairy fountain because of all the glimmering and everything. And I didn't really have anything strong against electric types because they're only really weak against ground type moves. So it was an interesting battle for sure. I had a lot of weaknesses to electric types and my flying types. But yeah, I Mega Man X music. Prevail, and it was still a fun battle. His Emolga liked using Volt Switch way too much though. Also, I had no idea what type Heliolisk was whenever he sent it out. No idea at all, except for the hint that it was electric type. It's almost I like golf commentary. Helioptile to evolve into that. I always thought it would evolve like a helicopter or something, but no, it's just the Helios definition meaning from the sun. Instead of Dude, imagine the helicopter reptile though. Helioptile, Heliolisk. Imagine if it meant like hel helicopter, and their ears started like spinning around. I'd live for that thing. The heliocopter. I always thought that for some reason it would start flying or something. But anyway, yeah. Fifth Jim versus Clement the Inventor. There goes Clement. Or Clement. Clement. Definitely not Clement. That's a pretty looking badge. Thanks, Kale. Appreciate that. <laughs> looking one so far. Can we get Thunderbolt from him? That's probably one of the best gym TMs ever, right there. Thunderbolt really is though. Move. Really is one of the best gym TMs. All right. So that's it, right there. Yeah, Luna Volpix. The five. the. the Fifth gen sure transfer. Pokey transfer does not play around that many games. There might be something in Tough. between. All right, so walking around at night now. Here's my college campus at night, <laughs> which is pretty early for me. <laughs> uh, got to my fifth badge. Just strolling around, taking a break from Pokemon. Probably going to hit up an actual gym in a minute because it's free for students, so why not? Turns out the gym was closed since it's Sunday. Guess I can't super train myself tonight. All right. Legend has it, if that gym was open that day, I might have actually tried the rock climbing. But they weren't open that day, so I just didn't go. I, I, the movie could have turned out to have some actual rock climbing in it, but they were closed that night. So all I did was game. Heading for the six badge or whatever's up here, I made two realizations. First, I realized that the starters were a triangle of types. Like, uh, Delphox is fire and psychic, uh, Chestnut is grass and fighting, and Greninja is Got water and dark. Again. So each one is doubly weak against the one before it. Which, and, the, and they're all doubly strong against another. It works out really cool. And also, the Hex Maniac trainer class is back. And I don't think this has been a trainer class since Ruby and Sapphire. So this could be a potential hint towards a Hoenn remake. It definitely was. <laughs> but anything can be looked at as that because everyone wants to try and find hints at Hoenn remakes. Literally yeah. Sinnoh remake hints in 2020. The exact same thing going on there of the Hoenn region by this little girl. And this guy's like, I'm Gaddy, I have a scintillating story for you. Would you like to hear my story? Yes. Having a thunderstorm makes you feel so relaxed. Don't you agree? I have the feeling he might be related to maybe the bar that you find in the Pokemon Center or something. This guy's interesting. Six gym and it's very tight. And it's like a giant dollhouse, which is really weird. That was a nice like story. It. Also, that guy probably had nothing to do with Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire at all, or Ruby Sapphire Remix. I think I just talked to him on camera, and then I tried to, like, tie him in somehow, because I was like, wait, this I, this guy has nothing to do with it. But I just rolled with it, saying maybe he's related to the guy in Mauville City in the Pokemon Center, the bard, the storyteller, because otherwise there's, there's no point to that guy. Anyway...
here's the sixth gym. So we obviously covered a ton of ground in one day. I just had a whole lot of time to play on Sunday, and I just knew that I wouldn't be able to play much on Monday the next day. So I covered five gyms in one day. Uh, fairy type was interesting for me. I kept forgetting what its true weaknesses and strengths were. So I used Absol for a while without realizing that it was actually weak against all the fairy moves. It managed, oh, no. it managed to take out Mawile, though, with Shadow Claw. Because now Ghost and Dark type moves actually go through Steel. I forgot that they did that with Gen 6. That they, like, uh, changed how Steel worked to have that, that happen. They kind of nerfed Steel types in a way with that. Which, they weren't really trying to nerf Steel types. They were trying to, sp more specifically, like, nerf, like, Metagross and Bronzong. Because if I remember correctly, Bronzong was a menace in 4th Gen. Next up was Mr. As Mine. a special wall. And I took it out with Shadow Claw pretty easily. But last up was Sylveon, which was a different story. Maybe they also wanted Sylveon to nerf Heatran, too. Sylveon is a defensive beast. Especially with special attacks. I did not know that at this point. Kept using Dazzling Gleam on me. And I kept trying to use all these special attacks that did pretty much nothing. So That's I put up a pretty good fight. Especially with my ignorance on the subject. But yeah, that's the sixth gym. And definitely the last thing that I took on for the day, on day two. Because I was tired at this point. That's the sixth badge. Inside the dollhouse. Yeah, I bet a bunch of people struggled with Lucian. Or Lucian, how you pronounce them. It's gonna be interesting to see how he is in the remakes. We get Dazzling Gleam. It's uh, 4096 to get the ban, and it's not permanent. It's just like, uh, temporary. More like a timeout, if you roll the 4096. What's up, Joking Drummer? I'll take a sip of Baja Blast for that. Check it out, Baja Blast. Now let's leave this strange dollhouse and move on. Actually, I'm probably not gonna move on tonight. I'm probably gonna save right after this meeting or whatever happens here and go to sleep. The Pokeball Factory sounds intriguing. I guess I'll- Oh, uh, we're not doing layout morning. Pokemon tonight. I feel like it'll be too hectic with what we've already got going on. Oh. And I might as well show you all my team. It hasn't changed since uh, probably the fourth badge. I have my Absol. Yep. Still no Furfru on the team. I'm not using the shiny Furfru yet, because I'm still deciding how I'm going to super train it. I'm well. still deciding how I'm going to super train it. That's what I said. I, I never super trained it. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that thing is still sitting in my PC at the same level that I caught it at. I, I, it's just so many regrets. It's been a good second day. Day three will be all right, but I have a lot of stuff to do in the afternoon. So unless I wake up really early, I probably won't be able to get much done. What's up, Hobo with Cash? Late at night. <laughs> yeah, we're watching it day again. three, and I'm up really early to play Pokemon. This will probably be one of the only chances I get today. Super training Furfru stream soon? I have to drive later back home again for Community Band. You know what, if you can get, I think I you might be able to get rare candies occasionally through super training. I'm not 100% sure. I know you get evolutionary stones. But if rare candies are a possibility, then maybe if I do a super training gauntlet, that Furfru is what I gotta use. Because I promised the 48-something minute timestamp in this video that the only reason I wasn't using that Furfur was because I didn't decide how to super train it yet. I gotta decide how to super train that thing. Class today. But for now, I'm just gonna play to my heart's content. Man, I'm so glad I took footage in this apartment, by the way. I only lived in this on-campus apartment, this particular one, for one year. So I, I only have vague memories of it outside of the footage and stuff that I got of it. It's kind of neat how, like, just taking so many random camera footage of things and, like, tying them into Pokemon 
has let me like be able to relive random like segments of my life that would just be kind of forgotten otherwise. Because, uh, yeah, I only had lived in this apartment for a pretty short period of time. This is probably the easiest decision of my life. What's next to the Pikachu? That yeah. was like, um, a statue that I got from oh, Club okay, Nintendo, yeah, if I remember correctly, for free. I was something like that to happen. <laughs> I'd hate for someone who didn't know what a Master Ball was to just pick the big nugget. So this morning I caught a Shelmet, and I just used the GTS to get a car blast, and it was really easy. At this point I didn't have more than one two, 3DS, so I couldn't trade with myself. The only way I could trade with myself across multiple games would be to go on the GTS, have like an impossible Pokemon to fulfill on the GTS, and trade with myself on Y that way by doing that. And I literally did that for Gumi Quest, the first ever level 100 gauntlet. I put up a level 1 Gumi on the GTS, asked for a very strong male combi, and I traded over the male combi that I used on this team. So maybe it wasn't entirely pointless that I filled the sixth team slot on this, this game with a male combi. Because it let me trade with myself. So now, because who else had a level seventy-something male combi in this era before so hacked Pokemon existed? And traded for a shelmet. Easy, quick trade evolutions. Yeah, it'd be cool if the Switch had some backwards compatibility, especially with like 3DS cool. games. Come on, that'd be so cool. That's the power of the GTS. I'm going for Soul Rock. Right now I'm back in my car, about to head back home. Uh, I've spent most of my playtime today actually not doing anything storyline related at all. And instead, I have been focusing on obtaining all the forms of Vivillon, or Vivion. Vivillon. Which will be detailed in a later video, my lens is really fogging up. And also trying to hunt using the Masuda. That Vivion video got taken down for a while too, because I used James Bond music in it. I literally did like a James Bond intro for some reason for that video, I don't remember why. I don't remember the reasoning what, what compelled me to do that, but I did that. And the, the, that video was down for years, but it randomly came back one day. But anyway, I did do that Vivian video eventually. ...a method for a shiny Lapras, because I'm trying to see if the shiny chances are greatly affected by that or not. So, I'm probably going to play some more when I head home. But for now, just appreciate my Hawaiian shirt. If I don't, uh, I'll probably be playing some more tonight. Home sweet home. Was that Alola foreshadowing? Me wearing a Hawaiian shirt while playing through the 6th gen? It was. It was 100%. No, not really. I'm just wearing a Pokemon Hawaiian shirt. that I need to catch. And this one is Phantom. Some kind of Phantom stump. Well then. Just knocked it out. <laughs> I guess I'll catch that another time. Thanks to the air conditioning, my room is always really cold. And today I feel like I have the common cold. So it all fits very well with where I am in the game, where it is very cold. <laughs> and I'm just plowing through the snow on a, a Mammo Swine. I love all the Pokemon riding there. I think I like the Egyptian fur crew form the most. Too much fun. <laughs> so off camera during this part right here, I was occupied, I don't remember if I show this or not, but I spent almost the entire time doing this section of the game through Frost, Frost Cavern and stuff, watching Adventure Time, getting trying to get caught up on it. I think this was the last time I caught up on Adventure Time until I watched the entire series all the way through last year. So I had so much Adventure Time to watch last year because this was the last day that I was ever fully caught up on that show. I, just rem I have distinct memories of just having a cold blowing my nose like every 10 seconds, watching Adventure Time playing through this part of the game. Don't remember if I captured that exact moment. And I appreciate all the uh, the suggestions, Yeet, but I can't respond to all that right now. And what's up, Spark Tick? Yeah, you're watching it again right now. Director's commentary. Oh, look, I have the 3D on there. All right. Gym 7. Psychic looking lady. Maybe it's a man with crazy hair. Probably a lady. 
Olympia. Or maybe neither. Maybe non-binary. Interesting. This was another song that got copyrighted. This is the song Swordland from Sword Art Online, I think. And uh, that also got this video blocked in a bunch of territory. So I did another Hoenn sound font swamp here. Olympia was actually kind of cool in the anime. Her meow stick were crazy. I'm glad the anime at least gave some life to some of these gym leaders that did not have like much life outside of their gyms in these games. Aw, oh, sorry to hear that, Scotch. Hope you find your stylus soon. I forgot she had a slow king entirely until this point. That thing's just really there, isn't it? That's a lot of money. I love the amulet coin. The psychic badge. Fancy. Such a generic like a name for a badge. Looks kind of like a mega stone. Just named after the type. Psychic badge. So now one badge remains. Wait, what was that sound? And I'm gonna warp out. Now one badge remains. I think this was like either a gnarly like nose blow. Or me just like scooting my chair. Right there. So now, <laughs> I, I think that was me like blowing my nose right there. Like a little orbit. Never cut it out. Kind of like a mega stone or something. Right here. <laughs> so now one badge remains. This was hastily edited together. And I'm gonna warp out. It was a really cool looking gym with uh, all the space everywhere. And I'll let me show you my team real quick before I move on. There's the male combi! Pixel, Chester, Lapras, Absol, Talon Flame. And I actually just have this combi to try and get horde encounters quickly with Sweet Scent. But yeah. The bookshelves here tell an interesting story. King couldn't escape war with those who targeted a wealthy Kalos. The war grew so violent and angry, the king was forced to send his own beloved Pokemon into battle. This place is a real lore dump. research, AZ had a younger brother. It said he led a legion of greedy souls who wanted to seize the Kalos region. His dark intention was to make it his own. But when he saw how Kalos had been ravaged by the war, he took the weapon his brother had created. And he yeah, it was literally... Underground. That combi was on my team literally just to be a sweet scent user, because I wanted to do some horde shiny hunting. That's literally the only reason it was there. And it just kind of stuck with my team for the entire rest of the playthrough. It, it kind of just like snuck its way onto the final Pokemon X team. Another younger brother told his progeny the location of the ultimate weapon and died. That is something to be used by sophisticated powers, not by humans. Human beings must create a world where such a weapon is unnecessary. King's name was AZ, and he was both the beginning and the end. He used technology unlike any scene during that era to unite Kalos for the first time. Shiny Combi is cool. He was proud of the technology he used to bring Kalos prosperity, but he couldn't help but use it in a way that had never been intended. AZ, the man who was king, disappeared. When AZ, the man who was king, vanished, he took the key to the ultimate weapon. That is the item required to activate the weapon. Full of sorrow. Yeah, this is the exactly the how the French weapon. Revolution he went. This, he left the following words. Good night, Richard the Zora. Something you love back into this world. Without my beloved Pokemon, no other Pokemon have meaning. The mountains will never know one another, but people can encounter other people, and people and Pokemon mix together. Over the ages, people and Pokemon worked alongside one another and created many things. As a result of this, a leader appeared among the humans. That leader is sought to produce even more goods. Increased production of goods created a gap between the haves and have-nots. I really just read all of this. And that almost has a little bit of parallel to the French Revolution, whenever <laughs> the Third Estate rose up. The, the poor people rose up and uh, they went after the rich, greedy uh, upper class and nobility of France. But at the same time, a lot of this is a lot different, obviously. Interesting storyline, though. Alright, so now I'm presented with an interesting option. Red button or blue button? It's like the freaking Matrix, almost. I think I'm gonna press the blue button. The Xerneas button. 
the Zernius so button. is supposed to represent life. Darn it. <laughs> Whatever. It was just like that big nugget slash master ball thing. That'd be crazy if, if like they had, they had like Marie Antoinette or something or like a parallel of one of those historical figures in the game. It's like how everyone wanted there to be like the queen in Sword and Shield with like a yamper. Yeah, I was fresh off of my senior year of high school where I took European history. I took like AP Euro or whatever my senior year. Yeah, none of your choices matter in this game. Except for, you know, like, starter choice and stuff, but, like, choosing between the big nugget and the master ball, choosing between the blue button and red button, same result, either way. Greedy cutscenes. I don't know if I ever got, like, the 3DS screen directly in the center during this movie. Once. Like, it's always just a little bit off-center. Always not entirely occupying the frame. Gives a character, though. Like, you can just tell that I've stuck the camera up to the 3DS. Oh yeah, the bike color choice. That actually was important, that's true. Red, yellow, or green bike makes a huge difference. Yeah, that, that world, was pretty destructive, honestly. Whatever. So right now I'm outside my apartment, and I'm walking to class. And I'm at the climax of the game. So... Again. One thing I do remember from this movie was that this shot right here lasted so long. I remember my first rewatch of this, I was like, man, I really did just keep filming while I was walking right here. And, and just rambling on. So, this goes on for a minute. I guess I'll have to catch Xerneas afterwards. And by the way, I've been doing some research. I was hoping to reset for a shiny Xerneas, or Eveltald at least, but I figured out that they're shiny locked, like uh, Reshiram and Zekrom were in black and white, because people have been soft resetting for days and haven't been able to find them yet, and there has been no actual picture on the internet of a shiny anywhere. So I'm just going to assume that they're shiny locked and not waste- We didn't even know what shiny Xerneas and Eveltald looked like at this point. I'm really glad that, like, I picked up on the fact that they were shiny locked at this point, though, because I think there were still some doubters out there who just kept going, resetting for Xerneas and Eveltal, being like, okay, no, no one's found it because I'm going to be the first. And, uh, <laughs> I'm glad I wasn't one of those people. Glad I did some research first. It's my time on it. They'll probably be giving out an event sometime, like maybe Rush Samus is incoming, will. that's true. Hopefully we'll get the red Genesect sometime from last generation, too, because... It was so cool, and I just wish we could legitimately get it. What if this world actually is the alternate timeline where Team Flare is successful? What if it is? However, none of that would make sense because we'd all have to be French or descendants of Team Flare. Because all the people would probably die too. Oh, and there's Samus and a Metroid. That I was just randomly on one of the side of the one of the buildings on my college campus. It wasn't even a place that was like related to video games in any way. It was like something that was like a combination of like the business school and some local businesses just hosting like some offices within the campus. And there just happened to, for some reason, be a sticky note Samus on the window. <laughs> and it stayed there for years. The original was taken down temporarily, but it's back. The day after I re-uploaded this, it got taken back. Because some of the music that I used got it blocked in like 95% of countries. Yo, Jolly! Thank you for the, the sub, I appreciate that. What up, Henley? How's it going? We're re-watching the X movie right now, and I'm giving random commentary as it goes while hunting a soul rock. I went to Louisiana Tech, up in Ruston, Louisiana.
did computer science stuff. Yes, I did. I, I watched most of that Nuzlocke live, Vantica. That was very fun, watching the uh, X and Y Nuzlocke, the randomized one. It was brutal, so many runs. I'm still really glad that I just chose to use 1812 Overture for this, because it's a good song. So often throughout this movie, you'll notice me like have to turn off the 3D setting for the 3DS. Oh, and look, I actually centered the camera here almost. You still see a little bit of like screen off to the side that's not on camera. Never mind, it's not centered anymore. Keep on the SP love, absolutely jolly. Love me some Game Boy SPs. Thank you for the bits. I don't know if I'm going to ever play through a randomizer myself. Maybe someday I'll do something with it, but I don't really have current plans to at the moment. Oh yeah, that's true, the football gauntlet. Louisiana Tech was shown there. Can't really see my SP lineup I'm on tonight too well, but I'm on some good ones. Thank you for the, the more bits, Jolly. All right, check it out. We got yellow, Pikachu, clear, Rebecca Bass, orange and green, blue, and white. What's up, Uniform Poem? This is a good intermission just to chat with the chat while we're fighting Lysander. Yeah, it's like we're on the surface of the sun right now. This is ridiculous. The, uh, the battle background for this part of the game. You can find the football game on YouTube? That's crazy. I gotta find myself in the crowd sometime. And thank you, Kieran Travis. That that was, that was actually drawn by a famed shiny hunter, Wojay. He drew it for my birthday a few years ago and I turned it into an emote. <laughs> and Faceman Fro, thank you. Yeah, I am bootlegging Absol Blog's Pokemon's X and Y movie right now. I hope he doesn't mind me uh, showing it on stream. That would be excellent. This is this is fifth phase right now though. I found three Golbat and one Bagon so far. Going for that Soul Rock. One of those Golbats and the Bagon haven't been uploaded to YouTube yet. Yeah, I'm always stealing from Absol Blogs Pokemon. What can I say? My first two phases for this current hunt were done back in, like, J January of 2020, during my IRL with Mr. Let's Play It. Then I picked it back up this year, and I think he picked up this hunt too. We're kind of racing for this, but I don't know if he's been actively hunting it too much lately. I'd love to get it on one of the emeralds, though. None of the shinies I've found so far have been on one of the emeralds with the battle animations on, and I would love to see just the sparkle with the battle animation at the same time. It'll be my first time seeing that. I don't think I ever touched on it here, but it, it like blew me away that Mega Gyarados was part dark type. I was not prepared for that. Have I ever actually, like, blogged Pokemon, like, written a blog post? You know, I don't think I have. No, not really. Uh, I got the name Blog from Pokemon Blogger, who is, uh, the, the channel that I, that inspired me to make Pokemon videos in the first place. Uh, Pokemon Blogger 2 is his current channel. He goes by Zelgarath on the internet. It's been around for years upon years. He also went through a re-upload situation just like I did, um re-uploading like the platinum quest that he did because of copyright music. But glad you enjoy the music selection, I appreciate that. 
I'm always about like picking out cool music, even though it gets me like in copyright trouble a lot of the time on YouTube. Yeah, oh yeah, like I did do the reveal for the 8th badge of the badge quest tonight, didn't I? Just by saying this, talking about that Sinistee hunt. But yeah, I wasn't sure what I was going to do yet for, uh, until like I got to the 8th badge, honestly. It was always up in the air. But when I saw that new antique Sinistee method, I gotta try it. It's going to be cool. Lag? Uh-oh. Wonder why that is. Camera lag? Let me try something. I think I gotta do this delete again. Lake! <laughs> There's the good old neighborhood lake. But uh, filmed this year, like last week. Now it's fine? Okay, good. What's the new Sinistee method? Alright, so Anubis, or Sivana, on Twitter gave a pretty good description of it. I retweeted it last week. Um, if you knock out an antique Sinistee, if you save in front of one in the Crown Tundra in the Old Cemetery, by knocking one out or catching it, you have a pretty high chance of the next Pokemon that spawns in being another antique Sinistee. So you save, not always knock out that first one that will always have its shininess and stuff already set, and then hunt uh, off of any of the Sinistee that keep appearing in kind of a little chain there and reset any time that it's a non Sinistee spawns in. It's pretty cool. I'll have to like uh, demonstrate it whenever like I, I stream it eventually within the next week or so, but it's pretty effective. The professors, I think Professor Rex has been uh, going for it a lot too. Watching him uh, go for it inspired me to like start going after it. There we go. There's the 1812 with like the whole climax of the game. More Oras hints. Before we even knew that there was going to be Omega, I mean, Ruby and Sapphire remakes. I was onto them. You can find wild pulty guys, but I'm pretty sure they can't be antique. Not entirely sure though. I got this Pichu the other day from a good friend of mine. It's not guaranteed Brandon, that they'd be antique. And he uh, actually found a light bulb Pikachu after searching for a really long time, and that means Pichu can get Volt Tackle. This is very significant because. Uh, in Generation 5, there was no way to get the Light Ball item, and it's finally returned to being available on Pichu. So I'm glad that the uh, Light Ball has returned, because I really missed Volt Tackle and Pikachu's extreme boost from it. <laughs> Just glad to see that return, I guess. Alright, through the online... That is kind of cool, that like, it, it was weird going through all of Gen 5, not having Pikachu available in the game at all. It was a strange time, like, the, the mascot of the series wasn't there. And the light ball was only available through, like, one Japanese event. But how you know it's antique with Sinistee, you can tell by an evolution item. That's true, too. Yeah, with the antique Sinistee method, just touching on that a little bit more, it, I don't think it's guaranteed still that you're going to find a, an antique one by going off of the chain thing, but you have a solid chance. Much better than 1% chance by doing that, and that's, like, the theory behind it. And I think, plus, I'd rather find it as a Sinistee than a Pultigeist go through the whole evolution process and stuff. There is an icon on the bottom of the teacup. You can like uh, see it from certain angles during certain animations and stuff. But yeah, anyway, back to the movie. I'm on X and Y, there's a feature called Wonder Trade. Wonder Trade. And through Wonder Trade, you pretty much give out a random Pokemon and you get a random Pokemon in return. 
And today, Bulba Garden, one of the main sites, has started uh, a tradition that will hopefully carry on called Wonder Trade Wednesday. I've had the first Wonder Trade Wednesday ever. I can't believe I called it Bulba Garden instead of just Bulbapedia. I guess Bulba Garden's like the main site. But, uh, yeah, the lore. Wonder Trade Wednesday started right there that day. Attached an entire box of Amoras, one of the fossil Pokemon that's highly sought after. And I have a ton of those, so I'm just going to start trading them to people, and let's see what I get in return afterwards. Yeah, wouldn't it be cool if I did like a Wonder Trade level 100 gauntlet? Nice Genix, that's, that's great. Let's I always love people. random Safari Chinese. Alright, here's a whole box of what used to be Amoras. Probably one of the best ones I got was a Vile Plume. And the, the funniest one was this Miltank named Grace M, obviously named after a person. Which is kind of scary, almost like bullying, but I guess it's still kind of funny. I got a lot of Japanese Pokemon. Shout out to Grace M. I hope that that Miltank was named in like a fun way where she knew about it and not like behind someone's back. But uh, yeah, shout out to Grace M, the Miltank. I really like how you can see the country of nationality, which from a different country. Mostly American or Canadian, but I also got quite a few German. Wonder trading is really interesting because of that. Oh, and like French too. Journal Tour. Yeah, most of them seem to be early game Pokemon except for like Vile Plume, Nose Pass, Milzank, Dub Trio. It's overall a pretty good deal because I just ran around and hatched eggs. I did give out Amoras for free. That would be so bad it's if like I won to trade the first fruit. Now. Really haven't accomplished much in the past 24 hours other than breeding all those Amoras and wonder trading them. My cold has gotten a little bit worse, but I have a free afternoon tomorrow after class in the morning. So, and then I'm gonna probably we finish the main campaign. Nice. What's up, Retire? How's it going? Bash going through this old eight. Pokemon X movie. The final Just talking about it while hunting Sol Rock. this guy? And it's ice type. AKA cold things, and I still have a cold. In fact, the cold has gotten worse, and that's probably why I haven't progressed as much in these past few Second days. Second time I talked about the cold getting worse. That was a white flabebe. The white and orange ones are actually really hard to hunt if you're trying to random encounter for them. Yeah, this song was originally something else, too. There were a lot of songs that were copyrighted in the original movie. I just replaced everything that had, like, a, any sort of copyright claim on it in this version. But in the original, it was, uh, the, the Firebird Sweep by Stravinsky, since my town flame swept most of this battle. The Infernal Dance. I am still a fan of Cryogonal. I think it's really cool. Let's watch Sun Movie next. Maybe some other night we'll go through the Pokemon Sun movie. I don't know if I'll do two movies in one night. <laughs> and there's Wolfric. There's the H badge, which looks strikingly similar to Cryogonal. Which is a Pokemon I really like. It's in my top 10, I think. Oh, there's the top 10 comment. I don't know if it's still top 10 for me, useful thing from the but it's still pretty cool. Just like Thunderbolt earlier. Alright, so that's 8 badges. Next up is the Pokemon League. I think. Probably. We'll slide on our way on out and find out.
really cool badge check area. Really not that cool in the grand scheme of badge checks. Like, I, I was expecting something more Unova-like here, but we just get a neat door. Here we go. The Unova badge check was so sick. I'm about to set foot into the Pokemon League, basically knowing no one there. And oh my gosh, that is a beautiful castle. Did we even have a badge check in Sword and Shield? I don't think we did. We're about to go to the Super Smash Brothers stage. For the game that didn't even exist at the time of filming. This was before Greninja was even revealed for Smash 4. Let's go on and go after the Elite Four. Overall, I found the Elite Four in this game to be very interesting. Seabold and all the others just seem like extremely noble people. Still weirds me out that Seabold like is in like one of the most recent Pokemon card yeah. sets. Really so random for him Pokemon, to be in there. Like I'd never seen Barbara Cole before. And I almost got wrecked by the Gyarados in the first battle. I did originally have some narration to go with this, but the game was way too loud for to hear it, so I decided just to speed it up. That's true, I guess that is a bad trick. That, that is a boring badge check right there. Badge trick. That almost sounds like some made-up Pokemon playthrough people do. The train station. Really good X and Y themes. I did see the Cresselia card. Oh my gosh, the next Pokemon card set, Evolving Skies. I, I don't know what card I want most from that set, just because of how many good cards there are. Like the Batman Noivern. Um, I like the Golurk alternate art a lot. All the Evolutions. The shiny Cresselia and Frostlass, it's gonna be so good. I, I'm glad that I already pre-ordered a booster box and I did it from a real website and not from an eBay scammer. Did get a full refund on that though. Yeah, this is not the anime movie. Correct you are, Gardevoir. The actual Pokemon Gardevoir in the chat right now. This video really did blow up back in the day, though, just because people were looking for some sort of Pokemon X and Y anime movie. I think it was the video that got me to, like, a thousand subscribers on YouTube, which was huge to me back in 2013, when it happened. I think my Poképradar um, guide was also just randomly getting big back then. And then it happened like in 2019 with the uh, level 100 gauntlet series just all at once. It was crazy. I got it from Collector's Cash. There's the male Combi! In action! <laughs> Taking a hit for the team while I full restore another Pokemon. See, it had some use on the team. It was already level 54 at this point. Yeah, the Hollow Caster later he is a member of Team Flare technically. Oh no, poor Raptor. Hopefully uh Mud Bray number six is on the way. That's right, Mud Bray number six, you're gonna find like two of them. It is a really good Elite Four theme. I did enjoy the design of these chambers quite a bit. Thought the uh, the battle backgrounds were really cool. Pokemon always delivers on the music. I think it'll only be a couple years before we start to get the uh, Gen 6 music really does go hard memes. Maybe even a couple months. I'm calling it right now. We're gonna get like SpongeBob squeaking his boots to like this song soon. I guarantee it.
The remaster music in Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl is going to be so good. Yeah, one remake gets announced, and you, you better bet that people are going to be talking about the remakes of the next generation. Black and white remakes are all some people are going to think about for the next five years. Multiple guesses as to who it's going to be. One of my guesses was uh, going to be the uh, one of the, our rivals from earlier in the game, like Tierno or them. I actually had no idea who the champion was at this point, I'm pretty sure. Which is so cool. I had no idea. Imagine if it was actually Tierno, though. <laughs> I think Tierno would have been the funniest plot twist champion in the entire game. Like, going back in, in retrospect, it's so obvious that it was going to be Diantha. Even though I had never shown her in this movie at this point. But, uh... Man, that would have been so different, getting one of those just random rivals be the one that was there. Like Trevor, the Pokédex collector guy. Yeah, right. But I couldn't decide. Tierno just assembles the ultimate dance team, and it's like a whole dance floor for the champion match. Exactly who it would be. I already fought Serena in Victory Road. Uh, another idea was Professor Sycamore, which is a very unlikely idea. Then another idea. Then they literally did the professor as the champion the next generation after I talked about that. Saying Professor Sycamore would be the champion. Then we fight Kakui. Crazy. It was AZ the king. But also we haven't heard anything else from like the supermodel that was like announced at the beginning of the game. Let's just see who it is. The Radiant Chamber. Really shiny. If they did call her the champion in game, I kind of forgot about it, if that was the case. They just oh say that she's gosh, a movie star a lot, if I remember correctly. Oh. Or maybe I missed the, night, the dialogue that does say that she's the champion. Got. That lady, Diantha. Alexa would have been an interesting See choice. How she does. The uh, camera lady. What Pokemon she has and everything. I want to see N come back to Prince Scott. N, N was such a cool character. It is one of the best battle backgrounds of all time, hands down. It's so colorful. I have a terrible type matchup right now. Right up there with the Iris battle background theme from Black 2. I don't have necessarily anything that resists that too well. Just wait. She really didn't get a 3D model in battle. Do they do that for any other trainers in this game? They might. Oh my gosh. Oh yeah, no, okay, so yeah, for the Lysander battle we see the cutscene of him like moving in and stuff, but for this, we just saw like the Sugimori art. That's true, that's weird. Sorry to cut off the, the jam, I see y'all all dancing right there. The flying press move is pretty impressive. Alright, cool. Alright, next up is Tyrantrum, which must be the other fossil Pokemon. They did it for the rivals too? Man. Tierno would have been a better champion going off that logic alone. Maybe Dragon or something. Yeah. Cool stuff. Go Lapras. Gudra. That must be Gumi's final form. Didn't know what a Gudra was until this point. Crazy. Oh my gosh, it's so cool looking. Uh, Dragon Claw. I think I muted like 50 people at least on Twitter before this game came out. Uh, just to like, uh, make sure that I didn't get spoiled on a lot of this. Because people were sharing leaks all over the place. Full restores. It'll do it. Yeah, Tierno's a people's champion. Aurorus.
This one is ice and something. I'm assuming dragon. Not ice and dragon. <laughs> Evolved form of Mora. Yeah, did I fine. unmute them? I think I did with most of them. There might be a couple people still muted though from from those days. If you're posting Pokemon leaks, nothing personal. I'm muting you. <laughs> I mute a lot of people when it's right around like new game release in time. Mostly for the new generations. I don't care as much for like remakes and stuff. But around the time Sword and Shield were coming out, everyone that was talking about the new Pokemon got the fat mute. And I think I still haven't unmuted some people. Gorgeist. <laughs> what the heck? I have no clue what this Pokemon is. I assume it's Ghost type or something. That's interesting. Looks like Princess Bubblegum or something. Yeah, I'm glad that it's Ice uh, Rock. It's a neat combination, even man, though it's like bad. Best. Use Gust. I do have Crobat Shiny. I have three Golbat from this area. And one of them's a Crobat right now. Solid Shiny. Core guys look so much like Princess Bubblegum from Adventure Time. Ghost type was added. Trick or treat. I did see both of the Rayquaza uh, all art. Beautiful cards. Like the one with it flying over and the one with Zinnia. Both of them are so Garnoir. good. Ooh, it's, it's psychic and fairy now. That, that's a tough decision with Absol, because it's weak against fairy. But it has an advantage through the psychic type. Oh my gosh. Mega Gardevoir. Genuine reaction to that thing for the first time. Oh, but we did pretty well. We did a ton of damage first turn. Stravinsky. We use acrobatics. Boom. I actually put up a little bit more of a fight than I remembered. I th I, I remembered like just sweeping her team, and that, that definitely wasn't the case there. She did a little, almost did a number to me. Yeah, Gardevoir was in the chat. That's true, and on the big screen at the same time. I love Talonflame. I think I said that in one of my first uh, X and Y X speculations video, and I'm glad it turned out to be such a good Pokemon. But I should, really shouldn't be talking about that, because I just beat the champion. I'm the Pokemon League champion, and I have beaten Pokemon X version. Augustine Sycamore is the name. Yeah, beats the game and just starts talking about how cool Talonflame is. But let's be real though, Talonflame is cool. It's an early game bird that defied all the odds. Like, most of those early game birds are just terrible stats-wise and stuff. They're like stuff that... Just don't end up holding up towards the end of the game. But Talonflame is a monster. And it gets Flame Body for hatching eggs. Like, Talonflame is one of the most useful Pokemon, period, to have around here. We're the number one Pokemon Emerald stream right now. Watching Pokemon X. There, there are three Emeralds going on here, to be fair, though. Three Emeralds, two Rubies. But yeah, that's true. And I, I also want to point out that I called it X version there. This is the first Pokemon game to be released without the word version in the title, and it took me until Sun and Moon to realize that the word version was missing from X. So I kept saying Pokemon X version, Y version, without even realizing that it wasn't there in the title in the first place. Pokemon X and Y, that's it, that's the entire title. I was thinking Augustine was. Oh, yeah, Star After was cool too. You're right. Don't you mention the name earlier? close combat and such. Am I going to show us the save file? I mean, I could. If y'all want.
So guess who just realized the word version got dropped? Yeah, I'm sure a lot of people just realized. <laughs> Crazy. I miss it too. Having the word version in, in the Pokemon games is a staple. Show us Furfru power. I'll find it, don't worry. What a Hall of Fame. Pretty sure I have all these Pokemon still. I did rename the Lapras Marina, because it didn't have a nickname throughout this entire playthrough, and I felt bad because it was so it was an important member of my team. So I renamed her Marina. And she's level 100 now. Another quintuple Sol Rock. Gotta love to see it. This game has legit ending ending. This ending cutscene was so rad though. I like this. Coolest Hall of Fame sequence. Why are they standing here with us? Like, what did they do? <laughs> what an amazing turnout. All these people are here to celebrate your achievements. I'd like to present you with the honor of Kalos for the bravery you showed battling Team Flare. I'm I so guess they were kind of all. present in the Team Flare thing. Like, they were in the building with us. On behalf of the entire Kalos region, I'd like to say... Thank you. The Trevor cut. There's AZ. Hey, my hair's at a point where I could get the Trevor cut if I really wanted to. I think that'd be my final form. Battle with me. What? Want to know what a trainer is. I'm sure Tierno's really good at the Fortnite default what? dance. What? Wait, I kind of wish they did something other than the gym leader theme for this battle. Because it, it's just like, yeah, let's just give this guy who's so important to the story just the gym leader theme. He should have had his own battle theme. But anyway. this in a million years. I didn't really use Mega Evolution because I mean, kind of you don't get the Absol Light until after you beat the game. I didn't use the Kanto starter, so I did, didn't just really have the opportunity to have any sort of Megas. I would have used Mega Absol if I got the Absol Light early, though. I wasn't expecting right now. AZ is super tall. He's got a cool team. Sucker punch. I said, sucker punch. Me too, uniform poem. I'm still waiting for the eternal flower for it. One day. <laughs> They need to give it out someday, man. Like, I wouldn't even mind if they just gave it out on X and Y randomly. They're like, you know 3DS is still up? Go go ahead and hop on Mystery Gift and X and Y and download this right now. That would be the sickest thing that they could possibly do. Yeah, he's almost as tall as Ozzy. man, I never thought we'd be having this battle. Thank Here's you the so scene much for battling with me. Now I finally feel free. Free from the part of me mired in sorrow, the part of me that built the ultimate weapon. I love this song. The ultimate prison song. So good. There it is. 
Meme incoming. Meme on the way. Such a cool scene, though. Like, it became a huge meme. But it's such a good moment. I love it. Not tonight, Swizzle, but we'll, we'll go to another gauntlet someday and, and watch through one of those with commentary. I think I'm just going to do this movie tonight. Potential special flow out of it in the future? Yeah, I think they're going to do that. For sure. For sure. Hey, what's up, Curbstip? You have one question. Is this Absol Blogs? Yeah. That's me. I'm reacting to my own video right now. Or not really reacting to it, just giving commentary on it. Watching the uh, X and Y movie. We're almost to the end of it. While uh, hum hunting Soul Rock on the side. X2, Y2, when? Or Z version, when? Please. The, okay, what they're gonna do, here, here's the actual strategy. Here's how uh, AZ's flow it is gonna come into existence. They're gonna wait literally 3,000 years to release it. And then, like, if someone, like, one of our distant, like, and, well, not, the, we're gonna be their ancestors, like, millennia from now, three millennia from now. They're going to receive the Eternal Flower Flow Out event after 3,000 years. And it's only going to be distributed through Pokemon X and Y on the 3DS. And yeah, I'm officially a reaction streamer now, I guess. Ending. Incredible. They gave this song lyrics and stuff, but they didn't have anyone singing it in the credits here. So like, I don't know how it's supposed to go. <laughs> A remake as Z version would be like one of the best case scenarios. Like, I'm definitely more inclined for like reimaginings than remakes at this point. Like, I'd much rather see like a new take on a previous region than like the same take just kind of redone in 3D or whatever. Yeah, I'm chewing on gum <laughs> during this. I'm sniffling from my cold and chewing on some gum, smacking it. I think that that's going to be what happens, Yusefalon. Floet, the, uh, the shiny hunter who goes by that name. He will be 3,000 years old and actually receive it. He'll be the real-life AZ. I would have loved to see Z version, though. I was so ready for it. Okay, I gotta break immersion again real quick. My SD card on this camera is, like, basically almost full. I have to redo this every 30 minutes now. There was a lake again real quick. But do I use the battle video with my emeralds to advance frames before a hunt session? I do that on one of these files, because I've already found a lot of shinies on this emerald right here on the end. So I do the battle videos at the beginning of the session to like go to new frames. But these two emeralds have hardly found any shinies, so I don't even bother. But anytime I find a shiny, I think I need to go back and make a new battle video for that. That's what a lot of people do to try and avoid getting the um, duplicate frames. Maybe that's the strat. 5013. October 12th, 5013. That's when you can get your uh, AZ flow it. But yeah, now that we're getting towards the end of this movie, I'm curious. Would y'all be interested in seeing some of that uh, Pokemon X file in just a minute? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep hunting for the rest of the stream eventually after that. But would y'all be interested in going down a little walk down memory lane with that file? Because I can do that.
You can hear me literally typing on my keyboard while just filming this credit sequence. Is there anything else in here? Okay, I literally just filmed the credit sequence. Hold on. I'm going to actually skip this. I'm going to make the executive decision. I have no commentary on the credit sequence here. All right, let's see. Do I just edit after that? There we go. To be continued. I gotta catch them all. And that I eventually did. But anyway, yeah. That, that was the Pokemon X movie. With uh, director's commentary, kind of. That was my first time ever doing something like that. So, I don't know how it went. But I hope you had a fun time. It was a fun time, like, going through that movie again. So, I'm getting out my 3DS right now. Locating my X copy. And let's check out that file after all these years. Show the fur fruit. Yeah, I'll show you all the fur fruit. No worries. Booting up my 3DS. Pokemon X version. Unironically a blast. I'm glad to hear that. We'll do that with more videos soon, then. I was in a friend safari. Just doing some safari exploration. Let's see, hold on a sec. Okay, yeah. Here's the shiny talent flame that replaced Dravinsky. I, um... Yeah, I called this one through Pokey Radar not too long ago. Well, well, I say not too long ago, but it was like 2014. Landorus. A lot of Wonder Trade Pokemon in this file, too. Here's the shiny Fione that I hatched before the Wonder Trade Gauntlet. This took like over 900 eggs. This was like, yeah, December 27th, 2020, I hatched that. But there are all sorts of weird Wonder Trade Pokemon on this file, too. Um... I actually went on a kind of crazy journey in X after this. I got every single 6th gen final evolution Pokemon shiny. But using whatever methods. So I did like all sorts of stuff like uh, Poke Radar, Friend Safari and stuff for it. Let's see. It's Furfru in this box. I like this name, Tiny Fluff. That was a wonder traded one. Oh, there's Colonel Sanders. There's my Moltres that I soft reset for in Fire Red. Turn on 3D for full immersion. No. <laughs> that was the one that I actually transferred up because uh, I thought it'd be cool to have like a shiny legendary bird in 6th gen. That was a very long hunt though. That was like 23,000 soft reset single system. I think I got more shiny hunters. I mean shiny hunters. I got more shiny Pokemon in this box too. There's my uh, shiny Haxorus from the Nature Preserve in Black 2. Uh, let's see. Some of my phases from my Absol hunt. Cool draft. Very unorganized boxes here. Oh, there's Pixel, the Vivion that I used. It has Pokerus, level 85. Still doing well. Yeah, the, the Drowsy's name was Poo Poo. Derek Rose. I don't know if you're in the chat right now, but this, this Chestnut was named after you. I hatched both of these things. This this Fennekin was during my college biology class, and this um, Greninja was hatched during my uh, college calculus class. I did a lot of Masuda method in class that year in school. Toxic Santa. Here's my oh, there's the Furfru Shadow the Furfru level nine. I don't think it's gained a single experience point since I caught it. I've left it untouched for this many years. October 13th, 2013, because I never knew how I was going to super train it. Yeah, these are all my 6th uh, gen shinies in here. I really did do this whole quest back in the day. So I kind of did start a shiny dex kind of thing, but then I decided against it. This was before I really started to mostly do full odds. Yeah, those are my shinies in there. Uh, and here's like... um. My living decks of sorts. It's a little bit out of order. But these are like, um... 
all the six gen Pokemon in order that I was talking about earlier. There's Chester, my Chestnut, Stravinsky, chilling. Um, I think the male Combi might be on my Y file right now, so it's not on here. Let's see. What else we got on here? Iceclad Greg. What a good name. Oh, there's Diamond Dog. This thing is in the intro of the level 100 gauntlet. Shiny War Turtle. Oh, look, there's uh, some level 100 gauntlet legends right here. The Iggly Buff from the Daycare Auto Leveling Race. And uh, Struggle Bun. The Struggle Diggers Bee. Another Fiona left over from the gauntlet. An oddish named Rick Santorum. I'm pretty sure one of my friends traded me that one. Um, let's see. More wonder traded stuff. Uh oh, Pokemon number 591. Pretty sus. Uh, bunch of dino. I, I actually bred for like a competitive high dragon. There's Trevor the Barbarical. I received this thing as a binacle on Wonder Trade at like level 18. And it was named Trevor for some reason. And I just trained it up because I, I, I just like the name Trevor for it. Dialga. Oh, I think this is from Dream Radar. Yeah. This is from that other 3DS game, Dream Radar. Same, same goes for this Tornadus here. Volcanion. Here's my battle box. Uh, I did a little bit of 6th gen battling, and these were the incredible Pokemon I used. I used Krikatoon, uh, <laughs> Sticky Web, Avalug. Avalug was cool. Nacho, this Unburdened Power Herb Halucha. Level 100 Eviolite Grottle. The man. This was the main man. No one, everyone thought it was also ground type, so they, they just never planned accordingly for it. No one was prepared for this thing. And here's the Shiny High Dragon I bred for. 5 IV, modest, expert belt. I was proud of this thing. I, I put a lot of work into this. This was actually a very long Masuda method hunt. It took like uh, thousands of eggs. DD Boo. <laughs> what are some of these nicknames? Oh, there's one of the Deerling from. This is one that I stuck in the daycare when I was breeding for um, the Wonder Trade Gauntlet. I, I use this file a lot. This is one of my main files. Krikatot, Dino. Just lots of Pokemon here. Here's an entire box of Synchronizers. I just uh, bred a bunch of Eevee of every nature and evolved them into Espeon so I could synchronize for any nature I wanted to. Good night, Drew. Thanks for stopping by. And Fire Festival, thank you for the, the uh, sub. I appreciate that. And there we go. There's one of the Pokemon I was looking for. There's my Absol. And see, it is holding an Absolite now. Tornado the Absol. Used that during the gauntlet. Oh, Mariana. This was the Lapras on my main team, too. But Male Combi is missing in action. I think Male Combi is still on my Y. Or it might be in Pokebank right now. Oh, Legendary. Ontario 2005. Some 41, no reason. That's a Friend Safari Rapidash I caught. Random event Pokemon and stuff. Another Pokemon named Derek Rose. I, I think I was trading with him a lot, so I named it after him. A lot of Pokemon after him. Let's see... Bruce, Probo Pass. These are some of my Pokemon that I used in competitive in a uh, fifth gen that I actually transferred up. Not the Spinda, but um, I bred for this guy. I remember Punch Buggy I used a lot. Ray Charles, Gyarados. But yeah, that's that's a little tour of this file. What it's got going on right now? How many hours am I at? Let's see. After this, I want to check out my 3DS usage stats, because I think this 700 hours is only half the story. So I'm going to go to the usage stats real quick, and then I'll get back to hunting for a little bit longer. Yeah, shout out to Derek. I'm going to take another sip of Baja Blast while I'm loading up these uh, stats. All right, let's check out my 3DS's ranking here. Yeah, 789 hours actually on Pokemon X. 456 hours on Pokemon Black 2. 174 on Ultra Moon. 
Pokemon games dominate this 3DS. This is my original DS, but I, I transferred it over to a new 3DS a few years ago. Lots of video games. Lots of Pokemon on here. Street Pass, man. I love Street Pass. <laughs> I like how I've played Friend List more than I've played Netflix. More hours on Friends List than Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon. More hours on the Friends List than Dragon Quest VII. I need to fix that. <laughs> I spent too long on the friends list. To be fair though, a lot of these games I've played a lot more on other 3DS's. This is just one 3DS's records. Have I tried Baja Punch? Yes, I have, Code. And yeah, unfortunately I did play Sticker Star. Baja Punch and uh, Baja Flash. I've posted reviews of both beverages on uh, Twitter. But anyway, that was a fun little uh, walk down memory lane tonight, going through the X and Y stuff. Um, I think I'm going to hit 4,000 encounters on this hunt and then call it a night. So let's listen to some music. Uh, first of all, I think I'm going to listen to a song that many of y'all want, wanted me to listen to on stream a lot. So let's get this out of the way. I think Baja Punch is my favorite between uh, Baja Flash and Baja Punch. I prefer Baja Punch a little bit more. That's a good idea, Retro. I tried mixing the three of them together and it wasn't very good. I filmed it though, it's gonna be in my Batch Quest movie for Shield. I can't believe we had a Beedoof day. Still can't figure out all the logic behind it, but I'm not going to question it. Later, Chessie Bot. Have a good one. Appreciate the luck. Nice purple Hika, that's awesome. Second gen shinies are so cool. Classic song. I think it's only fair that we play this one next. I saw it requested. Actually, no, we gotta listen to the full version of it. There we go. I can't believe they made a holiday just to do a Rick roll, too. It was up, Tyrant. I'm sorry, this is the first song you listen to the first time you step into the stream, but uh. You can be somebody. It's the way it be sometimes. You can be somebody if you believe it. Yeah, German Naruto opening time. Believe it, believe it. Naruto, Naruto, Naruto. We could use a C E J E? Maybe. I think I gotta save it. I used it a lot during Safari Week. We listened to it every day during that. And I got a Rumble weekend coming up, like, early next month, I want to say. I need to, like, save the power of Nightcore Cotton Eye Joe and its shiny luck for Rumble weekend. So we might we might have to retire it for a little bit. I just understand I'm building up Cotton Eye power by, by not listening to it for a while. Good night, Uniform Poem. The ninja fighters are coming in. If you believe it, you can be somebody. You can be somebody. Is Who Goes Maractus? No, it's not a Safari Week only thing. 
It's actually a normal shiny hunting stream thing, but because I was also like doing that movie thing tonight and it was taking up so much of the screen, I opted not to have it on tonight. But keep saving up those channel points. Next time I do a shiny hunting stream, if I'm not like reacting to something like that, we'll, we'll do that. I think the format of me like just watching a video or something while shiny hunting could actually kind of work out. And multi gaming gal, thank you for the raid. Hope you had a good stream. Welcome. Nice rat smacker playing through that. Are you playing through sword or shield? Okay. You got a saucy Sunkern sprite? I'm excited. I'm very excited about what's going to happen with the layout next time. So, uh, the Shinx Wooper Fusion right there just got a free stream to just chill on the layout the entire time. Hope you all don't mind. Just hit 5 a.m. Oh my gosh, that's late. Yeah, those two hours for that movie flew by, that's for sure. Oh, rip, you just lost your starter to Whitney. Yeah, Whitney's tough. You, like, you have to get through the metronome, then you have to get through the rollouts. It's intense. I'm glad to hear that, Kieran Travis. It's fun. Like, putting people's stuff on the layout. It turns every stream into a unique, personalized experience. Every, every Absaltastic stream is, is personalized, you know? Except for this one, because I just didn't think it would work out tonight <laughs> with all the stuff we were doing. But maybe it's personalized in that sense, you know? Let's see. What's a song that is in my recommended right now that would be absolutely epic to play right now. I'll just listen to this really, really cursed song. And by really, really cursed, I mean this one's actually unironically really, really good. You don't remove them every stream, you're living on the edge. No, it's 11 p.m. for me right now, actually. It's it's 5 a.m. for Prince Scotch right now, but because of time zones, it's just 11 p.m. for me. I'm just staying up right now. Home Depot theme. Okay, maybe I won't stop at 4,000. I'm, I'm gonna stop when we run out of just music to listen to off the top of our heads, which might take a little bit. I'm just gonna listen to some of the essentials, I guess. I'll listen to some of the essentials, and then we'll um, call it a night. The coolest thing about this song right here, A Grand Tale of Time and Darkness, is that it includes like all the lead motifs that like, are throughout Explorers. In Mystery Dungeon. It's so, so, so nice. Call back to everything. A White Flute and Illuminate do stack. I just don't have it set up on all of these games for some reason. Because I guess I kind of like to um, lead with weird Pokemon sometimes. Like, I'm willing to sacrifice not getting en encounters as fast to be able to send out something like my Jirachi, you know? Or cat fights, or Mother of Nine. Well, actually, Mother of Nine is an Illuminate Volpe. I just think it's a funny nickname. Then we have Nominate Me, which is the uh, Star Me from one of my childhood Ruby copies. That I think that's also an Illuminator. But being able to send out Jirachi and Delcaddy is cool. Shout out to all the doers of the world from the Home Depot. It's a short song. We'll listen to it one more time. 
And then I'll decide what song we're listening to next. Yeah, you can have a fainted illuminator true. That's too, that's true. I should probably get that set up. I think it's just like repel tricks that don't work with fainted Pokemon at the front. It, I, the repel goes off the first like non-fainted Pokemon. So you can have a fainted illuminator at the front, then a repel trick Pokemon in the second slot, and I think it might work. If I remember correctly. Earlier today, I uh, did like four Absol raids looking for a shiny Absol and go, and I didn't find any, so we're gonna have to listen to this now, too. I'm back. I play Pokemon Go every day. I play Pokemon Go. I you can get shinies Pokemon from Pokepelago, it's really cool. I'd love to do that. What's the Repel Trick thing? So, Repel Trick is something that's more prevalent in the older Pokemon games. When you use a Repel, it prevents Pokemon that are lower level than the Pokemon that you're currently using from appearing in the wild. So on a lot of routes, you can use specific level Pokemon to weed out a lot of encounters and encounter more of what you're specifically targeting if it appears at a higher level on the route. That's what a Repel Trick is known as. It's cool. The re oh yeah, the Relicanth Repel Trick is ridiculously slow. Like, you're already underwater in the first place. And you can make it so it's 50% Relicant, but it takes minutes to get an encounter. It's brutal. It's something that I'd definitely just consider trying to just phase 4 too. Besides, you can get multiple Clan Pearl, get the evolutions and stuff. There's some, some neat stuff to phase on for the first few phases, at least. Yeah, Shiny Illuminator's cool too. Yeah, exactly, that's the mindset, Noli. A 50% Repel Trick that is really slow that I do want to try someday, though, is the Trainer Tower one in Leaf Green for Mantine. That's such a cool surfing hunt. You either get Mantine or Tentacruel. And Wild Tentacruel is actually sick. Alright, Coconut Mall Night Core. Oh, nice purple Hika. I've been getting so many shiny starters this week trying to catch the Balloon Pikachu. I just keep clicking on the starters. I got a Snivy and a Trico. But I haven't gotten, like, Pikachu or Darumaka yet. I want a shiny balloon Pikachu so badly, though. Oh yeah, that's way better, Nolane. That's, that's a good idea, for sure. Like, I did a Repel Trick for Absol, where it became 16%, and I managed to get a second phase. It was worth it, in the end. It is an actual banger, for sure. Same, the only event Pikachu shiny that I have is the one wearing, like, the, the special fashion hat. The drip. The one that I went the hardest for trying to get the shiny was the, the Luffy straw hat one piece Pikachu. I never found one. I was so bummed out when that event ended. Because I know they're never going to do that again. A balloon Pikachu in Pokemon Go, it's a Pikachu that's literally strapped to balloons, flying in the air. It's pretty sweet. Bum, bum, bum. Yeah, I do have kind of one of the rarest event Pikachu shinies, that's true. I Maybe I could trade that for like the, uh, the One Piece Pikachu someday if I ever find someone with it. Because that's genuinely like the only shiny event Pikachu that I that I really, really want. The balloon one I also want too though. Nice, Mr. Timefire. Consider me jealous. Yeah, this one it's the balloon Pikachu, but with the five balloon. But I like the balloon Pikachu. I shine out on that soul rock for a second, and its eye looked blue to me for a second, but it wasn't. Hold on.
This song has been stuck in my head all week. I don't know why. I, I guess it's because I've been playing a good bit of Mario Kart 8, but this song has been stuck in my head and it won't get out. Don't forget to save. I think they actually included the song in Smash Ultimate. I didn't know that until a few days ago. Ice Ice Outpost. I love me some cart. I've been playing online quite a bit lately, so... If you run into someone named Absol with a me that kind of looks like me but with shorter hair, it's me. I've been playing as a bunch of random characters, like, uh, I go Daisy on the bike sometimes. I mostly play King Boo and a Mercedes Benz. I also play a good bit of Ludwig. I just jump between a bunch of characters. Yeah, this is the, the Game Boy SP army right here. The, the quintuple setup. No problem, turd buckets. I, I don't know if you were here earlier, but I just watched through that entire movie with commentary on stream while doing this hunt. So if you want to go back in the VOD and watch it again, again, you can watch it with some added extra commentary from me. I want Mario Kart 9 so badly too. Like, the, that new Mario Kart Live thing was kind of cool, but it's it's not, you know, it's not Mario Kart 9. It's not like a shared experience you can like play online with a lot of people. It's not like the polished Mario Kart experience. It's more of a novelty with like a toy. And then Mario Kart Tour, the mobile game. I don't even think of that as, as Mario Kart. <laughs> they get some cool stuff in it, like the outfits and stuff. But I, I'm not even really compelled to download that game. Oh no, yeah. Sometimes you can never tell with those eBay listings, Nolan. Hope you actually do get the screen. Augmented reality is cool once. Yeah, you're right. Like, Pokemon Go, when, when it first came out, I'm sure everyone was using, like, the AR mode, but then eventually everyone turned it off because they were like, wait, it's actually way more convenient just to, like, uh, not use AR mode right now. And that's what people ended up doing. Let's see, what song do I play next? What song do I play next? I don't want to end stream quite yet. We still have the anthem to listen to, of course, but, uh... Oh, I, I remember what someone typed earlier. Here we go. Baby Park. I do remember those AR cards from the 3DS. I have like a sealed pack of them from one of my 3DS's. PSA 10. Not really. <laughs> I can't believe how long it's taking people to get their cards graded. Like they send them off and it takes like weeks or months just because they're in that high of a demand. Weren't there also Kid Icarus themed uh, AR cards? That is a game that, like, I constantly see people talk about would be the perfect Switch remaster, and I agree. I want to see Kid Icarus Uprising on the Switch so badly. Or, like, a sequel, you know? A lot of people struggle with, like, the, the controls of that game hurting their hands. They're being super stingy with 10s lately. I guess, like, that's kind of what happens when, like, people are so obsessed over the value of cards and stuff these days. Uprising has a good soundtrack, too. It's got some jams. 
I'll listen to a song from that next. I got one particular song in mind that I used in a Rumble Weekend compilation a few years ago. This, this uh, little track that I'm walking on in this cave right now is like pr approximately the size of Baby Park. In the Bagon room. What a revival of a series though. For real though, Cryptic Creature. Like, they took a game that was just like a standard platformer and it turned into a game like with just so much personality. Like, Pit and Politana's like exchanges between each other were like genuinely hilarious. Like, the, the really funny, fully voice acted dialogue. It really went the extra mile. And the entire game was just so unique, and like everything felt like you were really playing out a cool story. I'm about to do, have to do this recording deletion thing again. The baby part. I have so much footage on this camera right now from the Shield Badge Quest. That's why I have to keep going back and deleting this. I need to like actually move this over soon. Wait, here's a sneak peek of some camera footage. The lake. Okay. This is now a lake stream. There you go. Oh, and here's the pizza party that I found. I was walking down by the lake and someone just left behind a Little Caesars pizza and some Mountain Dew. And I was like, what is going on here? So, uh... Th th there's a pelican. <laughs> that, that, that ties into the shield badge quest right there. I'll explain why I filmed that pelican in that video. Pelican statue. But anyway, here's the Kid Icarus music. You definitely at least take a slice. I mean, it looked good, but... I think it had been left for a couple of hours at that point, and there were flies buzzing around on it. I, I wasn't about to have a piece of fly pizza. What's the target? I'm going for a uh, Soul Rock. Soul Rock's definitely the thing I want most, though I wouldn't mind getting another Bagon. I found three Golbat and one Bagon so far on this hunt. I wouldn't mind getting up to three Bagon to complete the line. But Soul Rock is definitely the prime target here. I think it's got a pretty solid encounter rate too, like 35%. Not bad. I think it's like 50%, or maybe it's 25%. 25% Soul Rock, 25% Bagon, 50% Golbat. Some distribution kind of like that. Mostly Golbat though. Golbat is not the goal. Average person eats three spiders a year. I've always wondered about that statistic. Like, do we really though? Like, I don't encounter that many spiders in, in my apartment. I, I don't think, really think that many spiders are crawling on me in my sleep to, to the point where I eat them. But I could be wrong. I don't know. Crazy statistic. Oh yeah, we are at uh, half odds now, 40-96. It's 25% here? Okay, that's what I thought. Yeah, I'd much rather go for it at the slightly lowered percent if Bagon's an option, than go for it at 35% where we just have more chance of that. Ooh, good luck, Freak Stick. That's a fun place to hunt. I've considered going for the LGM there someday. Sinus, do you really be 10%? It's true. Almost everything in Glimwood's like 10%. There's a ton of them. <laughs> that, that's a true thing, Nolan. Yeah, maybe there's someone out there who's just eaten like billions of spiders. Like, 
one person has eaten 18 billion spiders. No, wait, maybe like 21 billion spiders. They're just a spider connoisseur. And they're just bringing the average up to like three per person, you know? All it takes is just one like spider eating expert. Yeah, that, that's another thing, Prince Scotch. Like, that, I don't think any sort of spider is going to just be curiously crawling around on me when I'm breathing like that. Oh, that's crazy to think about. I don't want to think about spider in my ear. How many stick bugs crawl into our mouths every year in our sleep? Oh my gosh, I don't want to watch that cryptic. That sounds crazy. Can't stand the mosquitoes. Fur walk when? You mean Accumula Town? Yeah, it's it's fur at walk. Let's be real. The Accumula Town, like they've lost their entire like music identity to to like just this one ferret. Like an entire town of people, they don't have a song anymore because it just belongs to Furret now. luck before with my I think shiny blitzel I had like really really good luck with with that right after watching this okay let me think for a second does centred or furret even appear in the wild in uh, the fifth gen games maybe it's a swarm somewhere but I don't remember if it's in the wild anywhere I'll have to think about that. <laughs> this must be how Tuvalu felt after Twitch started using their domain. Too true. I remember, I, like, back in the early days, like 2011, 2012, I go to twitch.tv and get a warning that it was a site that was, like, established in the United States trying to use another country's domain or whatever because of the .tv thing. But maybe they're making bank over there in that country for it since, like, we're using their country code or whatever. I don't know. Interesting situation. Swarm in Route 7? Okay, gotcha. This is just regular. Welcome back, Jolly. You're about to get sent to Brazil in a little bit, though. <laughs> and by Brazil, I mean probably Dallas' stream after this. It's actually a significant portion of their GMP. I wouldn't be surprised at this point. What's up, uh, Nightmare? My hair's emasculate. Who cares? It's just long. It's an experiment. It's an experiment. Just let it grow out. I'm gonna get it cut eventually, but, you know, just trying things out. Long hair gang, yeah, that's what's up. <laughs> I've never had it this long in my life before. I've always just had like super short hair and I just grew it out to just like see what the struggles of long hair are for the first time. And I've learned a lot, like tangles and stuff. Never dealt with that before in my life until now. It's actually immaculate, thank you. 
You never know with people coming in on Twitch every now and then, Nightmare. There might be someone out there who gets really bent over something like that. What's up, Void? Thanks. Yeah, I'm gonna just keep it like this way until like my family tells me to get it cut like my sister's wedding is coming up in the fall And she'll probably want me to get it cut by then, but her fiance is also growing out his hair So I might just be able to keep it that way. <laughs> I, I'm just gonna cut it when it becomes too big of a burden It looks so different compared to how I looked in that X movie now. out of 10 SP comfortability over heartbreaking controller mod. I, I like to go back and forth between the two. Like, playing the SPs like a piano is so much fun, but the controller mod is so comfy for, like, hunts like Piplup and stuff where I have to keep mashing A over and over again. I like the best of both worlds, you know? I, I don't know what I'd be doing if I hunted Bayleaf with three separate GameCube controllers instead of just the WaveBirds. I'm glad, like, all sorts of controller options out there exist for hunting. Yeah, the super, the Winx is still here. And it's uncontested tonight, because I had layout redemptions turned off, because I was doing, like, the whole, uh, movie thing. Oh, we're five minutes into this now. I just realized I clicked on the 10-hour version of this. How long would we have gone if I didn't glance over at the other screen right there? That's an experiment for sure. Like... Just tell someone to listen to that song, leave it playing, and, and see how long before they ask, how long is this song? <laughs> we did that to our sister once, my brother and I. We were making a mix CD of songs and stuff, and um, we, we like to just make awful mix CDs for road trips whenever we were going on like a sibling road trip. And that's exactly what we did. We did, um, we took the song, I, think, I don't remember which Nickelback song it was, but we took a Nickelback song and there was a guitar riff at the beginning that just goes dum 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 That's the worst like recreation of it ever. But we just looped that for 30 minutes. And we just kept it playing it in the car, just smirking, waiting for her to be like, when is the song gonna start? And we just did that for that long. And Santa Claus, thank you for the gifted, appreciate that. Yeah. Thanks so much, Santa. You came for Christmas this year. Christmas in July. Level and thanks, Nightmare. Appreciate that. We'll have to watch through some of those someday and give commentary on that on stream. Yeah. But uh, after after the 30 minutes of Nickelback, which we did eventually skip after like maybe five to six minutes, we did awful covers of Disney songs. And I wish I knew where those covers were because like we pronounced everything wrong on purpose. Like, we did Be Our Guest from uh, Beauty and the Beast, but we said Be Our Guest. And we, we did, we, it was incredible how we managed to get through all of those covers without cracking up. It was so bad. We just listened to it the entire road trip over for torture. It's kind of exactly what I do to y'all on stream here while I'm shiny hunting. I just pull up cursed music and sit through it and just, like, watch how y'all react to it. Speaking of which. I want to Burger King, then I walk back home from Burger King. Walk to Burger King, then I walk back home from Burger King. What's up, Wadi? There is an insane amount of gaming going on right now. 
Dude, last night I was lurking in your stream when you talked about Oleg's uh, thousand sub special, and you were like saying it's something that some other people are doing that a bunch of people are saying looks cool, and I just like thought to myself, okay, is it Mirage Island? And then I saw up this morning he uploaded the Why Not in Mirage Island, and I was like, oh, I do it. Good luck on the Dragonite hunt. I was watching that, and I was really enjoying watching the whole process for that. Those shape, those rippling spot hunts are so cool. And the wild Dragonite sprite in Black 2 looks so cool. I underestimated how good it looks in the wild like that. I feel like Pokemon X and Y players really spiked when we were doing the uh, the Wonder Trade gauntlet. So many of y'all hopped on your games and went online. We were like the sole occupants on Wonder Trade alongside maybe some bots. Have I done any Meltan boxes? Not since they brought it back. I need to do that soon. Try and get another shiny. I already have four shiny Meltan though. I would always love to get another though. Get a shiny Magnet Polar for Sword and Shield. I have not heard I have seen Beyonce at Bur Burger King. I'll have to check that one out. Nice, good luck on the badge quest, uh, Nightmare. I'm on the final badge of uh, my shield badge quest now, and hopefully I'll be uh, streaming some of that within the next week. Going for the uh, authentic synesty, or the antique synesty. We'll see what happens. Gen 3 egg hunt, when? I, I was really thinking about doing that soon, for going for Lickitung is, is what I want to go for. I made up my mind on that since it was my first ever random shiny that I caught in second gen. I think, like, instead of doing the SP setup for that, I might do controller mod, because it'll just be so convenient to just do, like, four games at once with one controller, running back and forth hatching those eggs. Yeah, the, the lyrics are literally just, I walked to Burger King, then I walked back home from Burger King. What's up, Deoxstar? It is Shooper. Shooper is here. Controller mod really has revolutionized third gen eggs. It went from some being something that's looked at as a huge chore to something that just feels like more, a lot more doable. Yeah, like so many insane ones getting done. People are really going out of their way to hunt all sorts of cool stuff with those eggs now. Like, there was that whole egg month going on, and, uh,. I wish I prepared a little bit for it. I would have actually maybe tried to participate in it. Because third gen has is really like, if you're going to full odds egg hunt, third gen is like the, the gen to do it in. There's still some like cool things to go for, maybe fourth, fifth. But like third gen's got so many egg exclusives. Like all the in-game traits from Fire Red, Leaf Green and stuff. Tyrogue, baby Pokemon and stuff. Before the Masuda me method even existed. Because like, if I hunt in fifth gen, not going to lie... I feel more compelled to do the Masuda method than full odds eggs. But that's not the case with third gen. Like, if I were ever to go for Zoroa, I think I'd actually go for it with Masuda method. But I, I wouldn't say the same thing about some others. Yeah, Magby would be a sick one. The Burger King Xbox game. There are two of them. I'm pretty sure there's a racing game. And there's one called Sneak King, which is like a stealth game. It's pretty rad. Listen to a little bit more of this than I listened to at the beginning of stream. Why don't I Masuda? Just Masuda. Masuda methods is fun. I, don't get me wrong, I do it a lot. <laughs> but like in third gen, there if you want to get it in third gen, you have to hatch with a lot of those.
give credit. Yeah, I guess like speed really did like popularize a lot of that for sure. Credit where credit is due. The origin of the egg month. Quick rotator. Sometimes the Golbat look a little green in the shadows. I'm glad that they're not when they do appear. I don't think I got the reference. I, I don't think I did. <laughs> I, I'm sure it's a YouTube comment out there, right? I missed the reference, unfortunately, on that one. There really are too many bats. It's like too many cooks. Yeah, we've had quintuple bat way too many times. Because this thing's 50%. Every time we have a coin flip of a bat or something cool. And this time, something cool prevailed. Three out of five were, were cool things. Only two out of five were bats. I got to try out uh, the Fire Red Leaf Green Roamers with the uh, controller mod sometime. I want to see how that feels. Like, uh, running in and out of the house in Pewter City. I I'm wondering if that's the way to go for it, or if it's not. Like, I, I, I was already hunting it in a way where I didn't reset until I found all three at once across all three games whenever I was doing that hunt. So I'm wondering if, if I find it a lot more comfortable or a lot more of a hassle with the controller mod. I'll have to experiment with that in a future stream soon. Yeah, let's go for five out of five cools. That'll we'll try that. Oh, okay. It's it's from reversal, right? Turd buckets. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, animations are so cool in Emerald. They're pretty slow for the encounters and stuff, but I've never found a shiny with them on before. So I'm just, I'm chancing my luck with this. I'm like. Sacrificing hunt efficiency for hoping to maybe see cool, sparkling animation. If I were to ever hunt, like, uh, one of the legendaries through Runaways and Emerald, I would definitely have animations on. Like, going for Groudon or Kyogre, but with, uh, Runaways, it'd be so sick to see that thing move before it appears. Really been enjoying watching, like, all the Emerald hunts people would do, do, have been doing over the past year. Yeah, shout out to the Jirachi on the right screen. That's my childhood Jirachi right there. This this far right emerald right here, I've had this exact same file since May of 2006. This is an ancient emerald file. And this is the first Jirachi I ever got from the bonus disc on my Ruby. Trained it all the way up to level 100. There's some legends on here. That's four out of five cool things. Yeah, let's see if we can get a 5 out of 5. Uh, already ruined by bats. The bat dominance here. Only one cool thing. Failed the coin flips. We're go we'll go for 5 out of 5 cool things. And then we're going to play Kids Bop Evanescence after that. I think the Jirachi has some Baja Blast somewhere. Maybe if I wish I can materialize some right now. So, Jirachi, can I have some Baja Blast, please? Yo, what? Thanks, Jirachi. And Quirky Gengar! Thank you, appreciate that. Hope things go better for you soon. I haven't been really around streaming that much either, so you haven't missed out on too much. I took a little bit of a break to do a lot of editing and stuff, but appreciate that. I hope, I hope things go better for you soon. Thanks for the sub. There's uh, three cool things, two bats. I really hope that the Baja Blast comes to the Taco Bells in the UK. I was appalled when I heard that uh, 
Y'all don't have Baja Blast at Taco Bell over there. Like, what even is the point at that point? Two cool things? Three cool things? No bats? Four cool things? Five cool things? Look at that. That's that's nice, too. It's symmetrical. Bagons and rocks. What's up, Zapdos Goddess? All right. And right, right after that, look at this. The opposite coin flip happens right afterwards. Five bats. That's crazy, actually. What are the chances of that? I don't know. But, um... Gonna pull up the anthem here. We'll ride it out. Then we'll end for the night. It's been fun, like, going through that X movie again. Getting some more of this hunt done. Made some solid progress tonight. Like, almost 2,000 encounters on this hunt. It's weird getting back to, like, non-Safari Week pace. After, like how fast I was hunting for Safari Week, but doing Quintuple 3rd Gen is still so fast. One in 5-12? Crazy. Have I tried the Grande Crunchwrap? I haven't, and that's because, like, this might sound terrible, but I'm not a Crunchwrap guy. The only crunch wrap I like is the breakfast one. When it comes to the actual menu items, I'm more of like a quesadilla and quesarito guy. Did you know how a huge KFC is and over in Japan? It's like a Christmas tradition, Jolly. Like, I feel like KFC is like least significant here in the United States. Like, probably in, ironically, in like Kentucky, you know? Baskin Robbins is huge in South Korea. That's so random. I, I love hearing about that though. When like chains just take off in other countries like that, it's so fascinating. Seeing how things differ and stuff. I wonder if there are any other instances of stuff like that. I know 7-Eleven is huge in Japan too. It's like one of the number one convenience stores. They've even had some 7-Eleven exclusive Pokemon events over there. Thank you, Purple Hika. Appreciate that. There probably was a Genshin Impact KFC commercial. Crazy stuff. In Kuwait, it's like all of them. Yeah, I saw that, uh... Y'all have a Raising Cane's over there now, right? That's so cool. I'm glad that it made its way over there, because that's some good chicken. By the way, Yusuf, did your uh, Baja Blast ever come in? I I'm eagerly awaiting your review of it. I know you ordered some. Yeah, that is crazy, isn't it, Wadi? <laughs> you don't have any in, K in DC, but, but Kuwait's got it. Raising Canes is so good. It's probably what I'm gonna eat tomorrow. Most likely dinner for me tomorrow, at this point. Oh, it's not here? Aw, oh, man. I don't know where I was reading that then. Why does he bark? Like, I listened to the original song over the weekend because it was, like, coming on on Spotify on my drive back here from um, home. And I was like, wait, what prompted the Kids Bob version to bark right there to say rough? Because the original, <laughs> he doesn't, like, do anything that prompts a dog bark. Crazy. Crazy. 
That's crazy cryptic. I know there are some like strange small towns out there that have very specific rules about the businesses that can be there. That's like some super old timey small towns though. Really depends on like town to town though. Some places have just got a million chains and others don't have any. What's my position on Canadians? You, you know they don't Canadians, you know they don't exist, but what do you think? I think they might be out there. I don't know. I, I had a Canadian accent for a while. Um because I watched so much Little Bear when I was four years old before kindergarten. I went into kindergarten with a Canadian accent. And I was so confused when I was hearing all these southern accents. Because, like, my dad's from, like, upstate New York. My mom's from Louisiana. But, like, I grew up did not really speaking with a super southern accent until I got to school. So I was, like, going through culture shock when people were counting. And I heard one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Like, Tian was the most shocking thing to me. Instead of ten, people didn't pronounce E's. They were like, Ian. Like, hand me, the, hand me your pen. Hand me your pen when they wanted a pen or pencil. And it blew my mind. I, I, I was just out there speaking with a Canadian accent from watching, like, too much Nick Jr. Little Bear. Crazy. Ever had Whataburger? I have had Whataburger. Whataburger is, uh... Probably my favorite fast food burger, all things considered. In and outs good for the novelty, but Whataburger's like consistent. Plus, in the middle of the night, they start serving breakfast so you can get the honey butter chicken biscuit. I'm a massive Whataburger fan. Spicy ketchup every time, too. I don't even have a Shake Shack down here in Louisiana. As far as I'm aware of. There might be one in like New Orleans or something, but where I'm at, no Shake Shacks, no Cookout, no Bojangles. Lots of legendary sounding places that I've never been to. Yeah, Whataburger is a very Texas central thing. Kind of started to spread out across the South a few years ago. Water burger, yeah, a lot of people call it like water burger. That's what I thought it was the first time I heard it. They got some water burger, and I was like, who wants a soggy burger like that or a burger made out of water? So weird. There's one in Metairie, but it's pretty mid, super small portions, and way too pricey. Makes sense. Might have to like try it if I'm ever in the area though. You gotta look up Whataburger, it's it's solid. I think they have a peaches and cream milkshake right now as like their special. I gotta try it someday. Yeah, I've never had Jersey Mike's before. I have tried Culver's. I had it in Arizona. And it was all right. I don't remember what I got, but uh, I didn't hate it, that's for sure. You meant Shake Shack? Okay, yeah, I, I figured you meant Shake Shack. That's what I was talking about. Whataburger is, like, everywhere, though. And, like, Louisiana. Like, even in West Monroe, we had a Whataburger. It, it was, like, a staple at um, Tech. Like, it was the late-night spot where people went to go eat. You gotta try Whataburger. It's worth the, it's worth the trip. It's pretty good. But I think that's going to be my last set of encounters. Uh, <laughs> we, we ended up going a little bit further talking about food right here. Yeah, I did say I would stop at 4,000. It looks like we did an extra 418 here. Um, I guess I had a lot more steam in me after watching that movie than I thought. That's what's going down. But anyway, uh, yeah, Checkers is good too. I, I've had it a couple times. We're going to go raid Dallas now. So uh, I hope you all enjoyed the stream today. It was a lot of fun. Talking about that movie and stuff. I'll catch you all on the flip. And I will see you all next time. Some more uh, shiny hunting and stuff soon. And expect the uh, Wonder Trade Gauntlet eventually. <laughs>